It's so stupid, it's positively brilliant. Charlemagne the God. Andrew Schultz. We are the Brilliant Idiots Podcast, and this week's Brilliant Idiots is brought to you by... We're going to start later? Oh, we have you it. You know what? I think we're in mid-rolls. We got it? So it's not, oh, it's, it's mid -rolls. It's brought to you by someone, but later. It's brought to you by me and Andrew Show. That's, That's who the fact. fuck it's brought to you by. That's okay? a fact. Brought Every to you by, by Christmas. Christmas, the man. The holiday season. Uh, this Santa. Is, this is our last Brilliant Idiots podcast of the year. Mm. Last original content. Mm. Uh, Brilliant Idiots podcast of the year. Uh, drove into the city today, no problems. Thought I was going to be late. Left Jersey at 8.20. It's like a ghost town out this mm. motherfucker. Which is wild, because I would think everybody would be doing their last-minute Christmas shopping. Have you done all of your Christmas shopping? Um... I did, a, I, yeah, I mean, because, like, my wife does all our Christmas shopping, so everything is Amazon Prime and <laughs> Have you done fucking, all of our, your yeah, Christmas shopping? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, she does, that, she does everything online. I went one place in particular. Okay. Um, salute to my dude, uh, Greg Yuna. You know, uh, Greg. Greg was on here. Yes, Greg. The dentist is, guy? No, no, he's a jeweler. Jeweler, yes, that's right. Yeah, they, they, jeweler. Greg's a jeweler. So um, I, I went by him to pick up a couple of things, but that's about it. That's the only Christmas shopping that I did. Greg is dope. Greg is actually in the new Adam Sandler movie, um, Uncut Gems. They've been promoting this movie nonstop. On I, I thought it was on too. Netflix. Bro, me too. <laughs> Yo, times are changing, bro. Because I keep hearing about this shit. I'm like, where the fuck I see this shit on Netflix? So then I finally Google it and I'm looking at all the show times, the movie times. I'm like, man, I'm not leaving yeah, my house to go see that. this shit. But, yeah, come on. But <laughs> I heard it's it good, though. Nonstop. Yeah, Kevin Garnett, I think, is in it as well. So that's the movie KG is in. Yes. So the movie that Adam Sandler and KG are running around promoting yes. is Uncut Gems. Yes. Got you. Greg, you are crazy for putting that long ass piece on your Instagram. Instagram page. That's what made me think it was on Netflix. Why? What did he say? Because it's just this long piece of him in the film. It's like a, his whole scene damn near. And I'm thinking like, oh, this must be on Netflix. That's why I thought I could go watch it. Right. But it's not. So I guess they either gave him that to promote or he got a bootleg copy or something. But <laughs> yeah, salute to my dude, Greg Yuna. Yeah. But um, yeah, I, you know, I had to go. I went to the ER yesterday. For? Because I'm just like the most... Anxiety. Uh, okay, I I can have I can have the worst anxiety mm -hmm. when I hear about something. What'd you hear? So about? it's like you know, for the past few months, you know, I be having headaches. Nothing crazy, like nothing yeah. that makes me go like, oh, I'm about to die. But it's just a little bit abnormal for me. So I'm like, damn, did I put something else in my diet? Like, what's causing me to have yeah. these headaches? And then um, uh, last week, uh, somebody that I know, um, his his name is uh, Tyrone Garnett. He 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 passed away, and uh, they at first I heard that he passed away from a brain aneurysm. Well, then I was talking to his mother. Salute to Miss Jimmy Sue. Uh, I was talking to his mother uh, this weekend, and his mother told me that he actually died of brain cancer. Hey, yeah, yeah. And so these headaches that I've been having in my mind immediately, Became my crazy cancer. ass mind. Yeah, I'm like, holy shit, I might have a brain. I might be having a brain injury. Yeah, holy shit, I might have a brain cancer. Yeah. Holy shit. So I already had a, a scheduled appointment with the neurologist on January 14th. Uh -huh. I'm like, fuck that. Up it. I'm going to the ER this weekend. Yeah, because I gotta go. Out of the country. I'm going to Anguilla. Go to Anguilla. I don't you want to be worried about no I can't be having that Anguilla. shit on my mind. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? So I go to fucking the ER yesterday. And um, I'm fine. Nothing, nothing. Just like like migraines, regular shit. Uh -huh. But, yo, nobody in the ER gives a fuck that I was in the ER. First of all, salute to all the beautiful people that I met yesterday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah but yeah, let yeah, me yeah. tell you something. In a span of me sitting down, yeah, yeah. handing them my insurance card and, you know, whatever, going through the, the yeah, process, yeah, yeah, yeah. I had to take a picture, okay? I uh, spoke to somebody's daughter yeah. on the phone. Yeah. I um, listened to two songs, <laughs> okay? I listened, I, listened, I listened to two songs um, and another selfie and another guy. Another guy had on the mask, while he was tall, like literally had the mask the on. The stars mask. The on. stars mask, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought that was you. <laughs> I thought that was you. Yeah. I'm like, hey man, I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't know. I haven't figured this uh what's the word I'm looking for? I don't like the word celebrity. I haven't figured this celebrity fame thing out. I mean, that's that's fame. The hospital is the great equalizer. I thought about that yesterday. It's like the airport. I, yo, I thought now, about that yesterday. There's a certain level of wealth where like you go to Teterboro when you fly to New York, you go to the private airport. I've done that but a couple times. most rich people R are airplane. going to the airport. Absolutely. You could go clear, you could go TSA, you could do whatever. If you have an emergency, 
And you got to go to the hospital. You got to go to the ER. You go no, ER. you're right. I thought about that yesterday. I was like, yo, man, because I, I I was thinking just in life, we start the same place, you're in the same place. Dead you're and Coming alive. out of a yeah. vagina and you're going to end up in a coffin. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's just yeah. that's just everybody, right? Yeah. Unless yeah. you get cremated, whatever. Yeah, yeah. But our uh, C-section, you know what I mean. It's the right. same, same thing, right. right? So for me, it's like when you're doing stuff like that happens, you have no choice. Like, I thought about that yesterday as I'm sitting in the ER. I'm like, yo, the ER yep. is really the great equalizer, yo. Yeah. Like, no matter who you are, what you do in your life, you're going to have to come here at some yeah. point. Were you flattered that they were taking pictures? Like, um, while, they're, while they're dying? Yeah, you know, for whatever reason, I wasn't bothered. I wasn't bothered because, you know, yeah. my, my thing is, like, I, I think about the universe, right? And I'm like, damn, well, you know, salute to the brother. Brother was actually a really cool dude. You know, his, his daughter sings... SARS mask guy? No, 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 no. This was he was he was there because he was sick too. He did have a mask on, but he took it off to talk to me, which I appreciated. Yeah. But it's you like appreciated that. <laughs> I don't know. Keep that shit on, <laughs> right? <laughs> but he was like the funniest thing though. He sat by me and he goes, "Yo, pardon my smell. I've been trapping." You know what I mean? Because <laughs> because the hospital is like in between like. Patterson and Wayne and all these different places, right? So he was like, I'm from Patterson. So he's sitting there chopping it up and he was letting me hear his daughter. And the reason I wasn't upset because I was like, it, like, where was I hold going? On, hold on. He said, part of my smell, I've been trapping. I've been trapping. Now, <laughs> let me just understand this here. Trapping is selling drugs, right? I guess, because we had a whole conversation about that too, yeah. about the word trapping and how, you know, we can change the connotation because trapping don't always necessarily mean selling drugs. It just means you're hustling. I didn't ask no questions. Wasn't my business. But if he's suggesting it, it's probably... He just said trapping. I don't know what it was. How, because the illest part about this does, whole situation... How does it make you smell? I, it's he just smelled like he was outside. It's standing on a corner. Nah, this was like an outside smell. That's all. It's nothing Christmas. crazy. That's it's what I'm saying. Like, yeah, it, it wasn't nothing crazy. It wasn't nothing crazy. The illest part about him, though... He's, he, you know, his, that's just why you can't, perception means nothing. Right. Like, he's tall brother, long dreads. Right. He's in there because he's not feeling well. He's sitting down telling me, pardon the smell because he's trapping, yada, yada, yada. But then he's like, yeah, I go to school for, uh, you know, culinary. I do pastries. <laughs> whip it real hard. Whip it. Whip it. <laughs> Word up. I thought that was dope. Bacon soda. Then he starts then, then start showing me his brother, his brother, his, his brother from Patterson. He does culinary work in like Miami somewhere. Wow. He went to some fancy restaurants. You showing me all of these fancy dishes that that he's made. And I'm like, yo, this is dope. Turns out. And that's how we turned into the had the trap conversation because I started talking about uh trap kitchen out of LA. And I was telling him about how, you know, look at this. They call it trap kitchen. Right. Because trapping don't necessarily always mean. Hustling, you know what I'm saying? Right. Trap can just be a location. Like if the if the hood is where you get if you get your money out someplace in the hood, that could be the trap. And I'm like, yeah, I can't wait to see that trap pastry spot. You yeah. know what I mean? So I, I I I'm saying all that to say, nobody gives a fuck if you're sick in the ER. Yeah. Okay. They still want that goddamn picture. They're gonna get that. And they selfie. still want that conversation. Matter of fact, that selfie is even more valuable because you could be dead. <laughs> Right, like imagine they got the last picture with Charlemagne the God. Hey, man, absolutely. You're in there for brain cancer. I, possibly. Is that what you told them? No, I, I was trying to explain to the doctor. That the, yo, the doctor looked at me so stupid. The doctor was like, "You, you, you don't, you, you don't have a brain tumor." Yeah, he but were like, you like, how do you know? Yeah, exactly. I'm like, like I need a. Uh, I said I need a CAT scan. Yeah, I need he a said cat. that's too much radiation. He, he was like, you know, if you was to get something done with your head, it would be an MRI. He said you don't need that. All right, he said, he, me, he gave me a shot. He gave me a shot of some Motrin, made me take three Tylenols. And then, which I thought was like so fucked up, they made me sit there and watch the rest of the Cowboys game. It was like, just sit here. <laughs> it was like, sit here, you know, and, and tell me how you feel. So I'm watching the game, and I'm like, do I feel fucked up because my Cowboys lost? <laughs> or because I still got a, I got a headache. <laughs> like, I couldn't figure this shit the fuck out. And then he gave me a prescription for something that's a little bit stronger for migraines and sent me on my way. You have migraines? Um, Bro, I just think, I really think it's just all in my fucking head. Well, yeah, like, that's where migraines are. Man, shut up, man. You know what I'm saying? I'm saying? Like, I really drive myself crazy with shit like that, bro. It's the weird... I can't explain it. It's the weirdest thing in the world. You know what's weird is that, like, your ability to manifest things... Oh. But look at... Listen, gift and curse. Oh. Right? That's a weird sound. <laughs> it's but, the story of my fucking but life, it's gift bro. And the gift is, I'll manifest a career, I'll manifest all these different things. The curse is... I'll manifest brain cancer oh. or any other body ailment. That's why my anxiety 
gets the best of me. That's why I, when I that's why I actually titled my book Anxiety Playing Tricks on Me. Right. Because it's the, but worth it. It's, it's Isn't worth, it worth it? It is, but yo, you got to get a handle on it because yo, I really do believe my thoughts become things in a yeah. real way. So if I'm thinking some real fucked up foul shit, I try yeah, to dismiss yeah. that quickly cuz I've seen so much other shit that I've manifested in my life happened just because of my thoughts. I don't want this shit right. to happen because of me. And that shit right there will drive you crazy. It's like, stop thinking about that. Stop thinking about that. Stop thinking about that. Stop thinking right. about that. Like, that shit is wild, bro. But the benefit is good. Like, there are some annoying things that come with it. Yes. But the benefit's like being white. Talk to me. I, I can't, I can't like, relate. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> Talk to me. Talk it's to great. Me. You get to achieve all these things. It's, it's absolutely you, but see, amazing. But you're, you're, you're different, though. You're one of those people who leans into their privilege, which I don't it, see, the, which I yeah. think you should. Well, you know what? Yeah. Well, I don't. I don't view it as privilege, even if it is. Okay. I get it. That's like having a big dick, but acting like a small. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because if you act like you have a big dick, you're just gonna fuck cautiously. Yeah. <laughs> right. So, if, so you're not gonna treat these women equally, right? You're gonna be like, oh my god, I could hurt them. I need to fuck super yeah, cautiously. Yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah. my my feeling with like being white and white privileges. I can't treat you like an equal if I don't believe you are. You're a giant, right? So you walk in a room and you have to watch where you step because you'll step on people. Th that would be if I really believed in my white privilege. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, but yeah. By the way, it, which is what I tell all, I tell all extremely talented, gifted people that. Ah. Right? Like if you're extremely talented and extremely gifted and you know you're extremely talented and you're extremely gifted, you shouldn't have to be like this. But you just got to watch your step when you come into a room because you're because a you fucking affect, giant. Absolutely. 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 But, but I guess what I'm saying about the, the white privilege thing is that if I subscribe to that, I can't treat you or Taylor or Alex or Dwayne. Because you have a superiority Angela. complex. Exactly. So when, you yeah, are, yeah, 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 when yeah. you're interacting with people, you're interacting from this place of I am more privileged or I'm whatever. Yeah. So in order for me to treat my friends as equals, yeah. I have to not subscribe to the privilege matrix. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, I feel yeah. like these people who super subscribe to the privilege matrix are the ones that are constantly apologizing or like feeling bad or pitying feeling bad people for that are. Yeah. And then all of a sudden you don't have real relationships with people. You have I like this guilt-based relationship. So it is it is a weird I don't see anything wrong with that. I I, I see it it's, I, it's the I only mean, way like that's the only way I could possibly like make these types of jokes with you guys. Cuz when that when I'm joking with you guys you know that there is no filter that's being placed there because of the color of your skin, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I'm yeah. literally making the joke that I would you're make because you're a comedian. Because I'm a comedian, but yeah. also because you're my friend, not yeah, my yeah, black yeah, friend, yeah, 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 yeah. right? But yeah. if you become my black friend, now I'm treating you differently. And the whole point of all this shit is so we don't treat each other differently yeah. because of our skin color. That's yeah. the whole thing that we're trying to go towards. I um I, I see that with a lot of people though. Not even just you know taking it out of whiteness. I just think anybody that has. Any tremendous level of success because don't get don't get it twisted. With, yo, rich people too. Absolutely. But what about Absolutely. the rich people? And I think you, you even spoke about this. There, it's, certain... it's like if Beyonce walks in the room and Beyonce says hi to everyone. It's a total different ball game than That's if. It. And like somebody else, like the custodian walks in here and says hi to everyone. Even though no, I look at it all as respect, and that's how you're supposed to be. Absolutely. But if Beyonce does it, it's like some superpower. Like, can yeah. you believe she spoke to everybody? But she got to introduce <laughs> herself as Beyonce. Oh, I've seen, I've seen her do that. But is, but that's beautiful. And then people go, yeah. "Why are you doing that? You don't got to do that." But at the same time, she's like, "I need to be human with you." Yeah. Do you know what I mean? You got to take the edge off immediately. Being white is like being Beyonce. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I see the point. It's to crazy. The left, it's, to the left. It's crazy. All the minorities to, to the, the left. left. To the left. Listen, as crazy as it sounds, I see the point. I'm being honest with you. I see what he's saying. Like it's almost like yo, you just you know? gotta. It's like it's like checking your privilege. It's like knowing you got a gun, but I don't gotta pull it out. I don't gotta wave it until everybody get on the floor. I like to act like I don't got a gun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah because yeah, if yeah. I don't got a gun, well, I don't. But. Everybody feels comfortable. Yeah. No, I get it. I get it. I totally get it. You know I what I mean? It. Like it you're makes, walking around and people like, yo, this guy's acting like he don't even have a gun. It makes perfect sense. I'm going to tell you something though. Uh, I also came to a revelation last week in therapy. I went to therapy on Friday and this is, I've been feeling this way for the past few months, yeah. which is actually going to be a direct 180 from uh, what I was just talking about. Right. But. So you are going to suck Sakashi's dick. No, 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 no. I finally, I finally, I finally feel worthy, bro. Ooh. I finally got into a place of worthy. Now, yo. explain worthiness. 
I uh, last year I had a conversation with Bishop T.D. Jakes, and it's something that I've always dealt with. It's 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 like it's my therapist it calls it imposter syndrome. Like yes. you know, this is very common. Yeah, very yeah, very common for women in the workplace. Really? Oh, wildly common. I think it's very common for like people, especially us in the industry. It's common for us in the industry because we've achieved, you know, immense success in a field that's so difficult to feel successful. Yeah. But they say that women in the workplace, even in doing normal jobs, often have this imposter syndrome being like, are they going to figure out that I'm a fraud? Yeah, I, I do don't I really belong? deserve this. Do <clears throat> yeah. I belong? This, that, the other. Yeah. And that's like social conditioning that they actually grow up in. Like, yeah. like a woman's not supposed to be a scientist or this kind of shit. Yeah. So- well, all these people look up to you and they're like, oh my God, that's Charlamagne the God. He's got all these skills, et cetera. There's still a part of you that's thinking, why the fuck do I have this? Absolutely. As crazy as that sounds. Absolutely. I, I deal with it all the time. It's just, it's like guilt. Like, you know, you can deal with the, I guess, survivors remorse. And then when right? you look back, you know, at your hometown and you look at all the people that you grew up with and they not met, they may not necessarily be what's doing. What's so different about me? Exactly. What's so like what's so unique and special about me? Like there's nothing. And you'll tell yourself that, oh, there's nothing special about you. Like, right. yeah, whatever. And so Bishop T.D. Jakes told me last year, and that's why I actually posted that this weekend. He told me last year, he was like, yo, you have to get to a place of worthy. And he said that it's because when you were, he, he said most people that were touched when they were young, he mm. said, found them, like, you know, because I was touched on when I was eight. Yeah. And he was like, when you were, when you were touched on by you were young, yeah. you never quite feel worthy. Why? And that hit me so hard because- Someone couldn't even wait. Check it out, though. When I made her stop, yeah, she started talking down on me. Ah, uh, so it wasn't a touching; it was the criticizing afterwards. Yeah, when, the when touching it, would imply that you know you were the most worthy. Yeah, of everyone. But when when she when I when I stopped letting her do it, that's when she's like, "Oh, you got a big nose anyway, and you're ugly, and this and uh, that, isn't that." So it's like I don't know. I yeah. never thought about it, but it's ingrained in you. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. And so he, he said that's a common thing. And then I was, uh, I remember hearing Tyler Perry speak about how you have to get to a place of worthy because he said if you don't get to a place of worthy, right, yeah. God will take away you know, whatever it is that he's bestowed upon you. Right. You know, because you're not appreciating it and, you know, you'll find a way to self-sabotage. Right. You know what I mean? You'll find a way to talk yourself out of things. I yeah. want you to add those clips too, Taylor. Well, you could do it in pre-production, post-production. Post-production. Yeah. We're in a nice little role. It's on my Instagram. So, but yeah. over the past few months, right, yo, I literally be just riding and having these, 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 this, this energy just overcome me where I'm like, man, I'm really blessed. Like, yo, I, yo, I'm mm. re I really feel good. Like, yo, mm. thank you, God. Like these, these pockets of gratitude. And it's mm. like, I can't describe it. And my, my, my t therapist was saying that it's, um, it's all of these positive endorphins. She said, it's like when you're working out, you know how you work out and after you feel like, woo. Yeah. She was like, it's like that. And I was like, man, I've been really feeling that the past few months. And like, right. yo, last week I just was like, yo, I really feel worthy. Mm. Like everything that, I, I, I've done everything that I'm doing, everything that I'm going to do. Just me as a human being, my mm. my family, my my friends. Like mm. I am worthy of all of this greatness that is around me. Mm. And man, when I tell you that shit was like a, a, a revelation, like I've never had, like eye opening. Like mm. oh shit, like mm. is this what Molly feel like? Like is this what ecstasy feel like? Yeah. For <laughs> <laughs> this what shrooms feel like? Yeah. Really? Not shrooms. Molly. Molly. Yeah. Really? So, because you know how you're operating on like a, you were operating on a deficit, right? You didn't mm -hmm. feel worthy. Like you were empty. Yeah. So you're trying to fill that emptiness with things probably in your career, these different successes that you've made, right? Yeah. Um, Molly, for me, and I'm not promoting it per se, even though it's fucking fantastic, is not only do you get filled up emotionally, that void that you're mm -hmm. talking about, right? You have excess, and then you have the gratitude. And what I realized, whenever I have excess, the first place it goes is other everyone. People. Other people, word up. And like, say what you want about religion and religious folks, but truly religious folks that really believe it never are taking. Mm -mm. They are constantly in give mode. Absolutely. And I think, Absolutely. I truly believe, and I'm someone who didn't wasn't raised with religion, but I truly believe that their void gets filled with God. Or the belief in God, or the the belief that God loves them. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Absolutely. That emptiness that a lot of us feel. So it's like that that idea, that idea of like feeling worthy is really interesting because it's a double edged sword. Your lack of feeling worthy probably drove you to greatness. Mm. If Michael Jordan felt worthy, 
He wouldn't be the greatest NBA player of all time. What did Michael Jordan talk about in his All Star uh, accept or not his Hall of Fame acceptance? All speech? the rejection that he experienced because he didn't feel he didn't wor- feel worthy. Word. So it's this weird thing where it's like, how, what would you prefer? Yeah, I mean, what listen, would you prefer? Yo, it's a process, man, and I'm gonna tell you something. It's a beautiful journey, you know, because you know, like just me constantly feeling like that, like never feeling like I quite belong. And I, and I always felt like that was a good uh, energy to have because right. I felt like any if I ever got, if I ever felt in that space, I would get comfortable. But yeah. that's not, that's not, that's not the case. What, it's, it's now, actually, you, now you feel like you're still driven. I'm, I'm even, I'm even more driven. And the reason I'm even more driven is because of what you just said. Yep. I want to continue to be full enough to c- constantly have my cup overflowing so I can Help provide people. for everybody Bro, else. That's Every, the transition that yep. some, some entertainers don't make. Some like rock stars don't make. That's why a lot of these Athlete, not even athletes, but that's why a lot of these entertainers kill themselves. I truly mm. believe that. It's because they get to a point where they have everything they ever dreamed of, and they're still miserable. Because well, that's that's because they're, they're in their head that it's about them, right? It's not about you anymore. They didn't make the transition to oh, the new way to be. Before the way to be happy was sell this many albums, do this many tours, etc. Yeah. Then you transition to how do I help my friends sell this many albums? How do I help my friends? The, the greatest. Do this on tour? Dr. Wayne W. Dyer said that your purpose in life is service to others. It's hard to get there when you can't even serve yourself. Mm. It's it's like I feel like on some level you need. You know what? When they say on the airplane, they're like. um, Put your oxygen mask on first before you help the kids. Yeah. And our natural instinct would be, well, there's kids here. Let's put the oxygen mask on first. But the plane people are like, motherfucker, if you can't breathe. You can't help nobody. You can't help nobody. So yeah. it's like, I think the idea with this, with this like fill in the void thing is once you fill yourself, it will naturally spill over. It's like one of those... uh champagne glass towers in those fancy, you know, hotels or something, you know, when they have, or like a wedding, they have like a mm-hmm. hundred champagne glasses yeah, and they yeah. just fill the top one. And then all of them start to get filled. But if that top one doesn't fill, yeah. you know how hard it is to fill each one individually? Yeah. And I don't want anybody in here to, to, that's hearing me to think that you have to get successful in order to help. Cause my grandmother no, was full. Well, yeah. And but my grandma, my grandmother would always tell me that manners will take you where money won't. Mm. And you know, for me, like I always say money doesn't, uh, Money doesn't change you. It just multiplies whatever you are. Yeah. I've always been a giver just because that's what I always used to see my folks do. Right. right? My father, regardless of what his financial standing was, would always was always giving something. I don't give a fuck if it was a beer. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. My grandmother was always giving something no matter what her financial status was just because she would cook and, you know, you want to eat, you're hungry no matter who you were. Mm. So I was always that type of person. Mm. I would always want to, you know, just be of, of service mm. to people. But now... Sometimes when you when you uh, get an overabundance of something, you can find yourself being selfish. And I, it's easy for me to have this conversation now because I've finally figured it out. But even talking to my daughter the other day, my daughter, you know, they do Secret Santa. She do Secret Santa Chili and Secret mm-hmm. Santa at school, all different places. So she ended up getting like a bunch of the same gift. Mm. It was like some candles or something like that. Mm. And she's complaining about having the same gift. Yeah. And I say, well, right now, you're not being grateful that you have an overabundance of something. I mean, what kid gets another kid a candle? Whoa. <laughs> It's a but not, shitty I'm fucking saying, present. But, but, and so, so she, she, it's so funny you said that because she said to me, well, well, the person that gave it to me told me they wish they had got me something else. I said, that's probably because knowing you, you made a face at her and was like, I already got, a, I already got this. <laughs> you know yeah, what I yeah, mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you probably made no, her feel bad. We have electricity. We don't need candles. <laughs> Who the fuck gives a kid? Why would a kid ever buy a candle? That yo, is the dumbest gift. No, yo, these what kids, school is this? No, are you sending your kids yo, to like a special school or something like that? It's Who's private, getting, but these scented candles are bomb. Exactly. Yo, I don't these care kids. how good a candle smells. Bro, these kids it's are... It's a fucking candle. It's yo, a nuisance. It's just trash. Yo, some you of have these, to clean it all up. Some of these kids are into mindfulness way more than us, bro. <laughs> so they're meditating? Yes. Yo, what if my, they gave it... Hey, give this to your dad. He'll me calm and, down. Me, me and my daughter <laughs> meditate together. <laughs> really? Oh, yeah. I med- I this do, is great. Yeah, yeah, I meditate with my daughter. I do breathing exercises and everything. This is great. Absolutely. But she had the candle, and I told her, you got six of the same candle. Mm. What should you do? She was like, I don't know. I was like, now is your opportunity, being that you have an overabundance of something, mm. to be a blessing to somebody else. Yes. So beat all those kids over the head with those candles. <laughs> someone <laughs> someone so else will appreciate. It. Someone else will appreciate that candle. Who is going to appreciate a candle? Kid, the kids. These Who kids. in history, outside of Paul Revere, has ever been excited <laughs> that there is fucking candles? You're from. You so from New York, yo. Why? Because you have never experienced a hurricane and had a natural disaster I or did. anything. Because when you do, I did have a hurricane. I, listen, if something's gonna I happen. Use my iPhone flashlight. <laughs> <laughs> we got a candle right wait here. Wait till that shit go dead. Exactly. It's gonna what come it a point. It's gonna come a point in time yeah. where America's gonna get hit with some type of natural disaster. You'll be like, where the fuck are those candles that Charlemagne's <laughs> you know daughter what? had? And I'm gonna light the candle, and it's gonna go on. I'm like, wow, 
the most minimum amount of light. This is so exciting. Thank God. Thank God Yo, I can barely see no. still. The, so, the one wi- candle no. doesn't light yes, shit. Yes, it does. Bro, one if candle. I turned off all the lights in this room and lit one candle, you would be shocked. How dark it was. At how she, no, how bright There'd it was. A little thing of light in the middle and nothing else. We still got the lights. We got a, we got the lights from the window though. Yeah, no, if if it was see pitch how black, you guys are talking out of this candle. Listen, listen, you would love a candle, bro. Candles are candles shit. suck. That's why no. we replace them immediately. No, no, no. I love candles. That's why candles got to smell good because just being a candle isn't enough. They're like, hold on, did you get me a just candle? <laughs> <laughs> this doesn't smell like apple cinnamon or anything. They do. They, just they are better when they. Light. They are better when they're scented. Say what? They are better when they're because scented. because they do nothing when they're not. Even when they're scented. <laughs> Even Listen. when they're scented, they suck. Listen, fuck the candles. The moral fuck of the story the is... Fuck the candles! The moral of the story yes, is... When your you daughter ha- has every no. right to be pissed off at these but, piece of shit kids. No. Who raised the, them? The moral of the Who story is... Who raised these... You know what? They didn't buy a present. They grabbed some candles good Catholic from people. their parents. All right. Say again? <laughs> good Catholic people. They stole church candles? <laughs> They're stealing candles from Jesus <laughs> as Christmas presents? If that isn't the most fucked up shit. But when you have an overabundance of something, just be yeah. a blessing to somebody else. Because guess what? I told her. Like, our nanny just turned 60. Give her the candle. Oh, she need that vibrator. What are you talking about? <laughs> but, 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 with the candle. <laughs> what? That's how you make it scented. <laughs> <laughs> Smell like the Great Depression. <laughs> the moral of the story is, when you have an overabundance of something, be a blessing to somebody else. Okay, <laughs> even when you don't have an overabundance of something, be a blessing to somebody else. But I'm telling you, man, when you get to that place of worthy, that shit is better than any drug, bro. Yo, I, I 100% agree. It is an amazing experience to have. I will tell people that if you try to fill yourself first, you will. It will naturally happen where you want to give to these other people. Because right now we can sit here and be like, hey, give to each other, give to other people. It's going to make you feel good. And it will. Mm-hmm. It 100% will but Immediately There are people listening right now They're like Ah this doesn't make you feel good And there's no way to convince you it does But it's gonna organically happen Once you have what you need Listen By the way I'm not here to try to convince you Like when you get drunk The second you're drunk You're like Who wants a drink Anybody want a bit You're literally trying to give your friends things Yeah 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 Right yeah, yeah, yeah. I got you Next round's on me Blah yeah. blah blah Like everybody likes the drunk guy You know what I mean It's constant Depends giving. You're given. If you're a nice drunk guy, you have angry drunks out there. Even if you're an angry drunk, you're given ass whippings. Yeah. You're Do you know what I mean? Whip. You're beating up your family. You're, you're still given. You're slapping your dick on people's forehead when they sleep. They're, okay. <laughs> Who did that? I don't know. I've just seen videos. Chody slap. What's they call it? A chody slap. What is a chody slap? Chody so. So why you act like you didn't know what I was talking about? What is that? That's don't a blame cho- it on Puerto Ricans. It's a, well, <laughs> technically it's Mexicans. <laughs> oh, Mexicans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> don't blame this. That's white people shit. Yeah, but we don't do it when we're drunk. We'll be stone sober. We'll be like, hey, you know what he's he's sleep, he's sleep, he's sleep. <laughs> <laughs> he's just sitting. <laughs> Yo, run up behind him, slap his your dick on his forehead. Constantly. Mm. Constantly. <laughs> Listen, that's the thing for 2020, we though, love man. love dick games, dude. Do you feel like you're at a place of worthy? Yeah, no, both. Really? Intermittently. Talk to me. Times where I feel so grateful and I just want to share everything and I'm so lucky and so happy. And then there's times where, you know, I feel insecure and I, I feel like I need to fill it. I feel like I need to do things. But really? I at least know what the feeling is. You know, that's yeah, the cool. Yeah, yeah, I at least yeah. know where I want to be and I know where I am. But I'm also motivated by um, not having and I'm also motivated by by trying to get there. I feel like I've seen you get to a place of worthy. And the reason I feel like I've seen you get to a place sure. of worthy is because yeah. I've seen you, um, I think I've seen you align with your purpose this year. Okay. Talk you to know me. what I mean? Uh, just, 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 just as far as like, you know, taking your career in your own hands. Yeah. Um, yeah. Telling the kind of material you want to tell. So basically you're, you're giving the messaging you want to give out. You're telling yeah. the stories you want to tell. Yeah. And I think that has helped you, you know, align with your purpose and has helped just God opened up a multitude of things in your life. Yeah. You know, a lot of different blessings that you probably wouldn't have had 100%. a year ago because you necessarily didn't feel worthy. I yeah. feel like, and I've been saying it over the past couple of years that I feel like this is the first time I'm truly walking in my purpose, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. But that doesn't necessarily mean I felt worthy. I just felt like I was walking in my purpose. How do you, how do you, I feel like for me, probably for you, these are things are serendipitous, right? They just kind of happen, and then all of a sudden you're walking in that path, and then halfway through the path you go, oh, this is the path I'm Hold supposed on. to walk in. Let me, let me Google serendipitous before I answer that question. <laughs> I think I know what it meant based off the context you used it in, but I don't want... Hold serendipitous. On. Hold on. She's a Greek hold girl. On. Yes. Yes. Uh, yes. 
The occurrence and development of events by chance in a happy or beneficial way. Exactly. Like, it could yes. just happen. Like, it's not like you were like, I'm going to walk on my purpose today. Here's the path I walk. You were doing something, and then all of a sudden, within it, you realize, oh my God, this is what I'm supposed to do. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm sure same thing with me. It's like yeah. all these different events happened, which pushed me down this direction. And then now that I'm in the direction, I'm like, oh, this is the exact thing I'm supposed to do. I guess what I'm trying to say is I know there's people listening right now that are going, how do I walk in my purpose? And the same thing that happened with stand-up comedy is people go, well, how do I find my voice? People Ooh, talk I got about that. my voice, right? Or even in radio, it's like, how do you be Charlemagne and not... The, per the people that inspired you. I got that answer. Okay, talk to me. Talk to me. Talk to me. That answer, uh, that answer <laughs> comes in what I just told you, telling your story. And the reason I say that is because my true purpose, I feel like, happened when I started putting out literature, right? When I wrote my first book, mm. Black Privilege. Because even though I've told my story on radio, told my story on podcasts, when you actually package it together and you give people this, right? Yeah. And the way I packaged it, because, you know, I'm big on self-help books, right? Yeah. So it's like I gave you eight lessons that I learned in my life based off my life experiences that I think can help you. Yeah. Now, prior to that, I didn't really move around like that. You know what I'm saying? I stopped going to the clubs and all of that type of stuff. So when I started going out on my book tours and shit, yeah. And realizing the, the impact yes. your words and your story has on people, right? Yes. And so when the next book came out, which was just me detailing my journey in therapy, right? Like keeping a journal of things. Like, like yo, literally, Chris, that book, when did we start writing that book? It might have took four months. Wow. It might have took four months. Like, honestly, because I was just keeping a journal of everything that was going on. I'm like, yo, Chris, yeah. I think I'm ready to go back in. You know what I'm saying? And so... We put that out to the world. I'm just telling my story. I didn't even have it figured out yet. Right. Like I'm, I'm, I'm I still don't have, no have it figured out. But I'm in the process of just this mindfulness thing and going to therapy and just doing right. the work on myself, getting to a place of healing, and it becomes this thing. Right. Where you become this unofficial mental health advocate, and, right. and people are inspired by your story, and they saying that hey, I go to therapy now because of you and things yeah. like that. So I'm like. Yo, this is my purpose. So this is what I'm supposed to be doing. The first book is your first real experience in giving on a macroscopic level. Meaning you've given out jewels on the Breakfast Club yeah, 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 and, yeah. These, and these types of things, but mm -hmm. they were always done for the sake of humor. Yeah. This was done with humor mm -hmm. and drama, mm -hmm. but for the point of helping people. With the point of, yeah, it was, a, and I always said that. I always say, yo, I, this is a self-help book for the hood. Right. Without even me, that wasn't even a planned thing. I just like reading self-help books and I know how right. self-help books have helped me. So you're like, I I'm just don't do feel like something so they I'm going to do something for people that talk like me, that look like me. Boom. All of a sudden you see In my the language. effect of helping people. Absolutely. And you're like, whoa, this is what I got to do. I got to help people. I didn't know I didn't know that my my story was helping people in that way. And so when you yeah, ask yeah. me when you ask me about purpose and how to find purpose, I really think it just comes in telling your own unique story. story. Yeah. That's it. Whether that whether that lens is through comedy, whether that lens is through radio, podcasts, right. books, music, whatever it is, the greatest thing that you can do to assist other people is tell your story. That's how you find your purpose. Hmm. But everybody's story is different. Right. Like you might have, you might have gotten molested and you know got through that. Right. You telling that story helps millions of people who've been molested. You might be somebody who's dealing with anxiety, depression. Yeah. So you tell your story. Now you're helping millions of people who, who that are going through anxiety, depression. You might have yeah. gotten sexually assaulted. You might have, you know, you might have been totally opposite. You might have had a life where you was privileged and you know, became the next Steve Jobs, whatever it is. But you told your story. Right. And it energized and empowered somebody else. Yeah. That's how you find your true purpose. And I truly believe that. Addictive. Yes. In what way? Um is it more addictive than the I'm, reaction to like a big breakfast club interview? hundred percent. Like what is the difference between a big moment in radio and a big moment in altruism if you will like helping other people those big those big moments in radio do nothing for me outside of an entertainment perspective and you and you truly know the difference when you are sitting somewhere and one person runs up to you and tells you that yo man i started going to therapy because of you man thank you for talking about anxiety depression you know whatever like I, I've, I've really been trying to be more mentally healthy because of you that could be one person that mm. nobody ever sees mm. that shit gives you a different high 
But you know when you do the, the, Break just, it down. the soldier boy to Kashi six nine whatever it's just that's just sitting around on your so, phone laughing at the memes or but, going but, on YouTube and watching the hundreds of thousands millions of views like yeah. Break that down though. Break it down. So, so you're in the the midst of like, let's say, a Soldier Boy interview, right? Like, mm-hmm. you know it's going to be crazy, right? In the middle of it, do you know it, or you're surprised by the reaction? I'm just, I'm just enjoying that. Like, I'm. Ne- it's never. I promise you, I've never thought. I only, and I told you this before. I've only thought about the the aftermath of it, of of something once. Which was the Floyd Mayweather shit. Cause I uh, I did that in my mind I'm like oh this shit about to get mad views we about to get married mad people gonna be talking about this shit that's the one time I did something for that sole purpose and it didn't feel good because the intentions weren't right the intentions weren't right didn't feel good so everything else everything is just, else is organic naturally happening absolutely but you've been in the game long enough where you're like this is gonna be effective yeah yeah yeah, yeah. you could predict effectiveness yeah for the most part yeah and so what is what is the situation you're in where you're like oh this is gonna slap interview wise yeah. I mean, you just never know how big something's gonna be. Like, I, 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 if we're talking about 2019, I could, I could say, like, yeah, like Soldier Boy gonna be funny, but I didn't know that shit was gonna Take over. end up on SNL yeah. and all this stuff. Like, you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. I didn't know it was gonna be that. Even yeah. Birdman, yeah, I didn't yeah. think Birdman was gonna be that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm What's saying? One where you were like, you, you predicted the a reasonable amount of success with it. And you just can never tell. Like, like I, I stay in this year, even when I'm when I'm having a conversation with Elizabeth Warren, and I'm like, and hey, you like the original Rachel Dolezal? To me, that's a throwaway line. But everybody live it. Live it. <laughs> yes. Yeah, that shit becomes yeah, yeah, discussions yeah, yeah, yeah. on Fox News. And stand. Right. That, to me, that literally was a throwaway line. That wasn't nothing. I'm like, whatever. So you just never know. You really can't predict it. Certain things you can, certain things you can't. So maybe that's the difference. What? Where it's like the success from those interviews mm-hmm. is surprising in a lot of ways. Right? The intention was to have a funny line or to have an interesting interview. Get Just have a good there. conversation. You have a good conversation, yeah. et cetera. And then if there's this amazing reaction to it, that's that's icing on the cake. That's great. The intention with the book is to help someone. I think it's the same thing. Fair enough. But if the intention with the book is to help people and they come up to you and they're like, hey, you really helped me. That's different. Yeah. Because you're invested differently in it. Yeah. You didn't go to that interview with Elizabeth Warren and go, I'm going to say this dozo thing and everything is going to go. Maybe you do. I'm not exactly sure. No. But there's something when, when like, when you, when you go out and look for a gift for your girl for fucking weeks and you get the perfect gift and you give it to her, she breaks down, cries, and it's just the most amazing experience. That means more than when you just kind of hand your girl a cookie and she's like, but this is the most amazing cookie I've ever had. I was like, all right, well, I just had some cookies. Yeah. You know I saying? thought about that when I was rapping gifts this week. Cause I, by the way, I totally understand why Christmas rappers should get money. What do you mean? Have you ever tried to you ever tried to wrap a Christmas gift? Yo, I saw something crazy on the internet. This is that we've been rapping shit wrong the whole time. Really? Yeah. This. Oh no, here it is. So this is. I always put the gift in the middle of the paper. Mm-hmm. Right. We have rectangular paper. I have the iPhone. Fold the edges. Fold these. It doesn't fit. Right. I saw on the internet, you just turn the fucking gift. Holy shit. Diagonal. All of a sudden. Holy shit. All of a sudden. Holy shit. All of a sudden. All of a sudden. Holy shit. It's perfect. Holy shit. Literally turn it. What is that? 45 degrees? Holy Not shit. Even that. 15 degrees? No. Holy shit. I don't wrap gifts. I'm a man, Taylor. You know, word is born. When I went to go buy that shit for my wife and daughter, I said, yo, Greg, you don't have no gift wrapping services here? And he's like, nah. And I'm like, fuck. So my dumb ass wakes up on Saturday morning feeling worthy. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I feel nice and worthy. I just posted you know, Bishop T.D. Jakes talking about worthiness and Tyler Perry talking about worthiness. And NDRE hits me saying, you should really listen to my new album called Worthy. Phenomenal album, by the way. I can't wow. believe I slept on that shit this year. Hmm. Right? And so I'm like, fuck, I'm going to wrap my own. I'm going to wrap these gifts, right? Did exactly what you said. Put the shit in the middle. Bro, I try to wrap four gifts. It. I literally started that shit at about 8.30 in the morning. Yeah. By the time I looked up, it was 11.30. Yeah. <laughs> and I was only on gift number three. Mm. I had just finished gift number. I'm like, what the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, yo, I really see why these gift wrapping people get paid yeah. good fucking money, bro. Maybe, yeah, maybe that's why people buy candles. But I said, and, and, and by the way, like in that, the yeah. midst of that, I said to myself, I don't need to wrap these shit up. Nah. This shit is... Some good ass gifts. Yeah. <laughs> the fuck do they really need rapping? How do we even get here? I don't know. But this gift shit is stressing me out because I still haven't got my girl anything. I know, but it, I bought it up for a reason. I don't remember why. 
I need to get my girl a gift. You ain't bought your girl a gift yet? I uh, no, I've been busy. I've been on the road. I've been building out the studio. You know, it's been you know. By the way, guys, you can check out the studio. By the time this comes out, we should be live. But um, uh, but yeah, I've been trying to get my girl. No, nah, because we're going to Africa for Christmas and New Year's. You you making your girl to Africa? Egypt, what part? Egypt and Morocco. Wow. Yeah, yeah. I want to see those pyramids. Man. You should go to Ghana, bro. One of these days. Yeah, I was going. I, I was going to do that for New Year's Eve and Christmas, but I'm, when days. I saw all these celebrities going, I'm like, no, I'm not going. Yeah. So you want to Ghana? Egypt, everybody, everybody's going to Ghana this year. Yeah. Because it's the 400th year of uh, slavery. So they're going to celebrate it. Yeah. You know what? It's it's, it's kind of weird. <laughs> I thought about that. I was so like, all I, you guys are going back. It's kind of weird, bro. <laughs> like it's kind of weird. It's Why'd you weird. put us on that boat? <laughs> It's kind of weird. Like, a, like I, I, I put, it, I said it to myself. I was like, I don't, Bro, this I don't. Is ha- odd, dude. I, no, I mean, I it's don't. Like celebrating I, July Fourth in England. It. It's not the celebration of it. It's just the acknowledgement of it. I guess it's like a, you know, knowing yeah. where you came from type of thing. Yeah, but Americans don't go to like Japan for Pearl Harbor Day. I don't do they. I don't know. No, they don't. <laughs> I'm sure it's a few. Do you uh, think? They, yes. You, you really it's believe the same reason people go to Charleston. People love Charleston, South Carolina because of the slave quarters and the slave market. No, like it's the, that's not why. Why do they like it? I thought, oh, no, wait. Maybe it was Savannah, Georgia is the one I'm thinking of. Savannah's another place. No, but Savannah was the, the, the Union Army got there on uh, Christmas Day. I don't remember. And it was General Tecumseh Sherman said because it was Christmas Day, they, he wasn't going to destroy the city. Because at that time they was just engaged in total war, which means they were just literally moving from city to city down what south. What did you do the next day? Everything. <laughs> Fucked up Biloxi. I don't know. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Man, Creole, thank you. Thank you for Christmas. But on the 26th, as soon as the clock struck midnight, I enjoy those gifts that 24 hours because it's over. So you, you're going to see the pyramid. The pyramid is going to be amazing. That's the thing. I just want to see all these amazing things that, you know, that uh, we've, we've made as human beings and uh, in, in my life. Ah! You know what I mean? Ah! We, we helped. Maybe the aliens That's right. pushed us the right direction. The aliens, like, helped. exactly. They're like, you I, know? I, there's no way in hell human beings made the pyramids. Regardless, let's say let's say they were influenced, right? Taylor, I'm not having this conversation. Let's say they were influenced. Yes. Taylor's 27. You know what's so crazy? How old are you, Go. Taylor? 27? 20, yeah, yeah. 28. And how long have people been having these conversations about the pyramids and who built pyramids? Since the beginning of time. She looked me dead in my eyes and said, you don't think humans made those? I'm not having, I'm not going, I'm not doing that with you. You're, t- so you're like, 28. Hey, take out some cash. Do you have some cash, Taylor? Just give me, a, give me any bill. I'll show you something interesting. So when we were up in Boston doing shows, we got access to one of the first Mason lodges in history. Okay. Right? I think it was the oldest one on the West Coast. It was the one where Paul Revere was the head Mason. Clearly had candles. Love the candles. Yeah, 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 yeah. All over. Yeah, yeah. Right? And um, I think almost every president in history has been part of the Masons in some way. I think mm-hmm. Obama's a Mason. And they're this group. There's some people look at them like the Illuminati. Anybody can join, by the way, but they have this kind of like mysterious yeah, order to it. Mason Lodges. The Mason Lodges. We saw all these things. Now, if you look, what's that right there, Taylor? Mm-hmm. It's a pyramid, right? With an all-seeing eye on top. Mm-hmm. And if you look at a lot of like big American cities, even in Central Park, you'll see it. And DC, you'll see it. The Washington Monument is a big- all-seeing eye? Is, well, no, it's a big obelisk. You've seen those like big pointy, almost pyramid-like structures. The Washington Monument is the only monument that doesn't have the guy on it. Yeah, it's the Washington Monument, but for some reason, it's just this big, tall pyramid shape. Thing. Yeah, yeah. Like, why is there like this Egyptian influence in American and Western philosophy and culture? Yeah, and what these guys believe—and correct me if I'm wrong, Mason folks—but what these guys believe is is that there was alien influence. Had to be. And there continues to be alien influence and that every once in a while in history, not necessarily alien, but higher power, whatever you want to believe it is, right? An alien that would control shit for us would be a higher power. It would be God, essentially. And every once in a while, they push humanity on the right course. They nudge humanity in the right direction, right? So we're essentially a game or an experiment of of theirs. And that explains all these amazing things throughout history. The pyramids, for example, electricity, right? Right. Benjamin Franklin, you've heard the story about the kite and the key, right? They're like, they're like, that's not what really happened. Which sounds like total bullshit. Of course now. it's bullshit. <laughs> of course it's bullshit. Like that should sound but, like such but, bullshit. But, now. but as you know more than anyone, you need a story to sell the people on it. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. you can't just go, hey, aliens come in and they influence and they told me about this electricity thing that's going to give us an amazing advantage in the new world. 
That's not a story you can put the newspaper people. It buy. could be if you could if the if the aliens told it. If you got these aliens that are showing you like they can do all of this wild, but they shit. don't want to be known, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, maybe they push people in the right direction without even telling them. I mean, in a lot of ways it could describe religion. It describes all these things. Maybe they give them some information, and then people go left with it or they go right with mm-hmm. it. But still, it is an interesting way of looking at history and looking at these amazing events that happen in history, and and trying to fully understand why these events turn out that way. You know, and it's like, is it influence? Is it culture? What is it? The reward system? You who knows what it is, but it, it is uncanny the influence of like these like Egyptian obelisks and all this like Jewish, as a, Egyptian as a, art. As America. a human who's seen flying saucers before, I right. uh, saw my first one when I was eight years old right. in Monk's Corner, South Carolina, hovering over the trees in my grandmother's yard. Yeah. Uh, as a human who's been visited, imagine how by disappointing it would be to travel from millions of light years away. And end up at Monk's Corner, South Carolina. That's exactly where you would want to be. Imagine of all the shit to see in the world. You got the pyramids. Hey, man, remember my great uncle made those pyramids? We got to check those pyramids. That's where you you would want to be. Monk's Corner. Yes. The Great Wall of China. And I'm going to experiment on this little motherfucker right here and put all types of shit in his body and make him phenomenal to show the world how great we are. Who were you not molested by? Who do you think? <laughs> <laughs> Your aunt wants you. The aliens. How do you not feel worthy? You're the chosen one, motherfucker. That's right, <laughs> goddammit. You're right. Listen, remember when I came in here and I had those cuts on both pa- my legs? You remember that? You when know? I had the cuts on both shins Did in the same exact place? Hands too? I've had those. I used to have them right here. You can still see the scars right You're here. Jesus. Bro. Oh, listen, I know aliens been experimenting on me for a long time. Really? You know who else aliens built? The Joe Rogan podcast. Look really? At, look at Joe Rogan's logo. Look at his logo, God damn it. Ooh, now you ain't never hold on. Conspiracy hold Charlotte. On. Conspiracy hold Charlotte. On. Hold on. Building. Hold on. You on, you, you, what the fuck is that? <laughs> oh, clues bomb. Hold on. You ain't never paid attention Wait to Joe Rogan's so logo. Have you been probed and shit? Is that Absolutely. why you like it when your girl puts her finger in your butt? Come on now. Look at that. What, what, what does Joe Rogan have on his logo? Yeah, the, also, the third eye. That's the right. Eye. What's but my what's Joe my non- believes in all this. What's my nonprofit called? For years. For 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 20 plus decades. Huh? Third eye awareness. Third eye awareness, baby. Oh come on now. Oh shit. The aliens know what they're doing. Aliens out here creating some of the greatest media personalities of our generation. <laughs> <laughs> all right? Okay? So we can spread the word about them. All right? And we believe in them. All right? We letting them know the goodness of them and God. Yo, aliens, we appreciate you, man. Appreciate thank you, bro. You. Keep, thank keep you, man. Keep showing us these blessings, right. man. It's been thank working you. out. We, we you know. appreciate you. Y'all keep it up, man. Whenever you ready for, whenever you're ready to pull up. Yo, Jesus up there like, let him call me an alien one more time. <laughs> call me a motherfucking alien one more and time. And you know what I would say to Jesus? They <laughs> call you and all your friends are legal aliens, okay? <laughs> <laughs> They're building a wall for you and all your legal friends. Legal friends. Yo! Hey, Zeus. Whoa. You know what I'm saying? But no, I, I believe in UFOs. I believe in all that shit. But salute to Jesus. It's his time. <laughs> salute to Jesus. It's his time. This is his time. What do you mean? Oh, this is this his time, time of year. year where yeah. people... Yo, all jokes aside, we mm-hmm. talk about this every year. And I thought about this. Who gets... Less credit on Christmas. Who gets acknowledged less on Christmas? Yes. Jesus or James Brown? James Brown. But Jesus is right there with him. Hold on. What did James Brown do on Christmas? I mean, he just died. I'll be honest with you. (laughs) Wow. Wow. I'll I'll do you one better, Taylor. (laughs) I didn't even know he died. James Brown? James Brown? <laughs> Did not know that at all. <laughs> no fucking clue he died. He really died? Jesus yes. Jesus, no Jesus allegedly was born on Christmas. Uh-huh. James Brown, ele- would, I said allegedly, but James Brown died on Christmas. Yeah. Nobody cares about either one. Yeah. But nobody cares like the day people died unless they're killed. That is not true. Name the day anybody else died. Show Jesus was killed. <laughs> no, that's what I'm saying. If you're killed, we remember it. If you want your death day to be remembered, you got to be killed. Bruh, Santa Nobody Cla- dies calmly, Bruh, and then we figure it out. Santa Claus. Santa Claus ain't dead? Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. Rudolph dead. Santa Claus ate him. The Grinch. You think Santa Claus is going to be up there and not eat any of them fine-ass deers, bro? Bro, Jesus is like, and now we say this every year, but it's the truth. Jesus is, if there, if there was a headliner, yeah. right? Yeah. Jesus not even a cosh, bro. 
It's he's like, like <laughs> it's like no. It's like I'm serious. I'm serious. Your headliner right now, okay? That's my guy. He should headline in his hometown. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> home country, whatever it is. What I'm saying, if it was, you know what I mean. When you do shows, it's Andrew Schultz. Yes. You got your two opening acts. Right. 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 But I caught been on this shit. But go on, go on, go on. Jesus is not talking. one of those. Yeah, but Jesus is not headlining. He should be. It's his day. Yeah. His name is in Christ. It's Christmas, Christ. Yeah, yeah but Miss- it's cold outside. You don't want to see some dude fucking naked and shit. <laughs> <laughs> He's not dressed for Christmas. Bro, if the naked Christmas ca- is a cold Bro, holiday. if the naked cowboy can be out there in Times Square naked, come on now. How can he be naked, dude? I don't understand that. In this weather? <laughs> that's e- I mean, it's crazy. Hey, the, God created man in his image according to his likeness. So if the naked cowboy can do it, I know Jesus could. But did he create everybody in his likeness? Jesus? Yeah. Do you ever see some... Actually, maybe he did, because sometimes you see someone so ugly, you go, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> do you ever do that? <laughs> like, Jesus, Mary and Joseph, what the fuck? So that's crazy, because you do that with good-looking guys, uh, good-looking people, and... Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> Here we go again. Know, here you go. Here we go. The baby's meat pick got you going, huh? Start talking about naked men. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, that baby penis pic, which I haven't seen. Yeah, I saw it. To the right, it? to the right. It shows yeah, how stupid it. the internet is. Why? I. It's why, not the baby's dick. Who? Why would y'all think that was the baby's dick? I don't know, but that's because shit the was internet crazy. said so. Yeah, yeah. Like, it was just a dick. No, it wasn't just a dick, bro. But I'm just saying, there was this nothing. A, you was didn't. You didn't see who impressive. it was attached to, dude. I thought it was a. Was the baby's again? social security number on it? I think he was talking or something. Dude, I don't even know what was going on. I was just so baffled when I said, it looked like a bobsled. <laughs> looked like a bobsled. I thought there was four Jamaicans inside of it, to be honest with you. <laughs> I really did. It was the biggest thing I've ever seen. Really? And it was just curving to the right. How come? Wait, which one did you look at? I looked at the big old flat earth dick. Now see how different, see how different, exactly, you see how, you there's see a how, dick, dick that curves to the right. Talking about, you see how different coaches are? Andrew can talk about the dick. Nobody gives a fuck. Charlemagne <laughs> says something about I'm dick. Why they expect me to be gay? <laughs> <laughs> the expectation that is, is gay. Pri- that is white privilege. Yes, I'm I can serious. be gay and not be gay at the same time. This is how whiteness works. <laughs> Bro, dick, 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 dick. Exactly. Charlemagne mentioned the dick. It's no homo. Pause. You're gay. Isn't that? Andrew mentioned the dick. People really want to have a conversation about it. They really think it's, like it's just perfectly normal. Normal. Like, yeah, it did curve to the right, didn't it? it curved, Yo, like, you know what it is? Black people are paranoid about shit. Like, you're paranoid about, like, like racism. I completely understand that, right? Way more paranoid about dicks. But dicks? By the way, I don't no, get. no. Is there a lot of undercover gays in the black, black community? Black men Because you're always like, Yo, maybe that's it. Black men care more about being associated with dicks than they do racism, bro. Uh, you, break ain't that no, down. Ain't no, when you, you, nobody says pause when somebody says something racist. You know what I'm saying? Nobody says no racism. You know what I mean? It's, but mention, yo, let's go get a burger. Pause. Why? Why is that gay? I don't know. Cause it's meat in your mouth. I don't. I don't know. Yeah, but that's food. It's like they go have a conversation. What do you mean? So you can't even say let's go get a burger? They'd be like, what's this? Yo, that's this, gay to say let's go like, get a burger. Pause. Pause. Pass me that ball. But what if you're like, hey, can I kiss the tip of your dick? <laughs> Can no I, homo. Is that gay? Not if you say no homo. Listen, you know what's right, so crazy? So if you say no homo, anything after that, dude, this is my thing about no homo that uh, annoys the fucking shit out of me. <laughs> you're the gayest. If you say no homo, you're gay. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. you're thinking about gay shit nonstop. Yeah. You have, you know, how, like Charlamagne, you have anxiety. Yeah. Those people have gay. <laughs> they got gay on the brain. Yo, you know what's so wild? <laughs> Anxiety playing dicks on me. Saturday night. <laughs> Saturday night. I'm online. I'm on Twitter because uh, Eddie Murphy was on SNL. So yes. I'm watching. I, I'm I haven't wa- seen it yet. I'm watching all these trending topics, right? Yeah. So it We're was recording this Monday, by the way. Go on. It was the baby's penis. Yes. Right. And then it was Logan. Pa- they said Logan Paul was actually sucking a dick. Am I no. tripping? Yes. I know he was trending, but not Am I for sucking a dick. I promise you, I didn't. I, I just was reading what people were saying. He put the whole glass in his mouth. I have no idea. They said Logan Paul was actually sucking a There's dick. There's no way, bro. I, my point is, if this is true, because it could just all be social media shit. I will think about that. Yeah, I gotta, I gotta text Logan. The baby, <laughs> the baby it. got his penis out. Yeah. Logan Paul's giving head. Right. Nobody gives a fuck about the white boy giving head. Well, he's trending. Let 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 it be the other way around. 
If the baby holy was sucking shit, dick, holy shit! It's on point up. What is Logan Paul? Let me see this. I right don't want to see it. Hold on. There's no way. <laughs> You're not gonna pause that before you watch it. We got to press. He's teabagging too. He's teabagging. But you he can't playing tell. That, he playing that goddamn Mexican game Andrew was talking about earlier. Sriracha. So what do you call that shit? Sriracha? What you say when you slapped a dick over oh, the forehead? Shorty slap. Shorty so no, no, slap. Shorty slap. That can't be him. There's no exactly, way. But there no can't way. be him. This is my point. Is his face in that video? Nope. It, it's his chin. He's laying on the bed. <laughs> Hold on. It's not him, but he's laying on the bed and his head is hanging off the bed like that. And then there's some guy fucking his mouth. Okay, the baby video. I didn't see it. What 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 about it makes people think it's the baby? Uh, what? He was talking. You can dub that. Yeah, you can't dub. You can dub that. You can't dub. Yo, that we dick. gotta stop that shit with the internet. Yeah. Yo, the internet is gonna really. I'm telling you, some Orson Welles, War of the World shit yeah. is gonna happen in 2020. Yeah, yeah. If we don't get a handle on this shit, how do people just see these things and run with it like it's fucking no, factual? You're right. you're right. Yeah, the Orson Welles thing. What well, he said there was an alien attack. He was on the radio saying that it was a fucking alien attack. People were killing themselves and all types of dumb shit. I'm not gonna lie to you, bro. If there was an alien attack. I would beat those aliens away with the baby's dick. That's what I would use. That would be the weapon that really? I have of my choice. 100%. 100%. He's like an Avenger, dude. Really? Yeah. Is this one? Let me see. Curves to the right? I don't know if it necessarily curves. That's yeah. it? That's, That's impressive to you? This is this 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 is the privilege. This <laughs> It's bigger this, than his feet. This is the privilege of whiteness really? that yeah. I admire the it's most. An angle. That's nice. Out of all the privileges Yo, white people have. Take some dick, bro. <laughs> Out of all, Yo, this out of, dick uh, is literally twice as big no, as the feet. Out of all the privileges there. white people have, this is the one that I want the most. Here, look at no, that. No, forget the cop shit. Son. Forget the cop this shit. This is a dick. You forget, look at one every forget day. Forget getting pulled over by the police and all that and not getting harassed. I want to be able to freely talk about penises. Right. <laughs> yeah, without, yeah, yeah. without being yeah, judged. Yeah. Just do it, dude. You're worthy of it, bro. You're worthy to talk about dicks. Okay, fill that void. With that I do. Dick. I don't have a problem with it. That shit don't bother me. I don't give a fuck. Look, look, look. Just have. I'm not looking one. at that. I don't want to see that shit. Hey, look, 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 look. No, I'm cool. Hey, 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 <laughs> no, I'm hey, cool. hey, I don't hey, 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 look at mm-hmm. that dick right there. <laughs> look at that, look, <laughs> look at that dick. Charlie could do that to his too. What, what can I do to mine? Mean? What you mean? It's how the angle is. If he's holding it like this, your feet are like not going to be. How you I'm telling us how to take pictures of our dick? I'm Yo, saying, Taylor, you... Taylor, the dick is, it, the dick is quite Oh, big. that was a dick just now? You yeah. saw that? Because like, she flashed it up. I'm like, what the fuck? Yeah, 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 yeah. What's your thing? Let's play some games now. Did you see it? Uh, I saw it something. Like? Either that was a fucking reindeer antler. One of the goddamn two. I don't know what the fuck that was that was on that shit. That shit looked crazy just now. The baby, the big dick reindeer. <laughs> Yeah. That's the thing. <laughs> so You're just looking at the size of it. <laughs> You're impressed by the size. You don't have to like this buildings, but you can stop look. holding that shit up like that. <laughs> what the fuck is wrong with you? You cannot look at it. <laughs> you you can't, cannot look at it. This is like a fucking big ass screensaver. Why do you... Wait, what? <laughs> like the thing is just bouncing around your screen on your computer, just hitting all the sides and bounce. <laughs> Real Say talk. This is your thing. Right. Yeah. When you stand up, yeah. it's going to look We get it. You take huge cocks. Why are you trying to defend it's yourself? Not, not Taylor, it's a big dick. We know we have dicks. I have a perfectly average dick. Say again? Oh Seven inches, three, four, eight when it's warm. That's not average. You know, average that is, is true. Average is like five di- inches. That is true, because I Googled this weekend. Taylor, I don't know what kind of cocks you've been devouring in your life, but you need to stop it. The okay? average size penis is like five and a half inches, I think. That's what Taylor takes down, that thing with all the plugs put in it. The extension cord. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, that's yeah, what you, yeah. Is that a normal size dick right there? No, no that's Are you not sure? That loaf of pumpernickel that you've been taking down on the weekends? <laughs> Jesus do you know? Christ, do you Taylor. know that the smaller your penis is when it's flaccid, the bigger it can get when it's hard? That's not true. No, Ask that is a fact. Asia. 
<laughs> Stop, man. That is a fact. No, it's not. I read that this weekend. I don't know why I Googled uh, how to make your penis bigger. but <laughs> I'll I, tell you why, because you looked at the babies. I don't know why I did. I really don't, but I was reading about it. And they said that when you when you have a flaccid, when your penis, the smaller it is flaccid, mm-hmm. the more blood can get into it to make it bigger. But no. the bigger it is flaccid, they said the less bigger it gets and the less harder it gets. I don't know if I completely subscribe to that, but there is... Some people do say that black people don't have necessarily bigger dicks. They just have bigger soft dicks. <laughs> no, I'm definitely a I'm definitely a grower. I'm just saying, like I'm on average, their dicks are harder, flaccid. Nope. I'm a but grower, hard, bro. Hard, it evens out. Nope. On soft, I'm Mark Ruffalo. On hard, I am the incredible Hulk. Mark Ruffalo got oh, 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 you're using a character. Yeah, I yeah, thought yeah, he, yeah. he had a big dick. Oh, I don't know. I'm just yo, saying. Yo, yo, yo. <laughs> Who do you think has the prettiest dick? Out of the Avengers? <laughs> What do you mean? <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> what do you mean? Let's narrow the scope. I mean, there's a lot of pretty dicks out there. But... <laughs> out of the Avengers. Out of the Avengers. Rocket Raccoon, hands down. You think the raccoon? That's Absolutely. A pretty, Rocket a Raccoon. Pink tip like a Absolutely. dog. Absolutely. Rocket Raccoon, hands down. Why would you say that? He's just. You could just tell. Like, why? Why else would an animal wear pants? If he didn't have a big dick. So you think he's got a fucking hog. He's just packing. Come on, man. Or do you think it's like a cur- cute, like, little furry thing, like a rabbit foot? It's probably, when, when he gets hard, it probably just, like, it, like, peeks out, like, hi. Yes. Hi. Like a, like a little kangaroo in yeah, the pouch. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I would say Rocket Raccoon. Rocket Raccoon. Yep. Okay. Absolutely. Prettiest pussy of all the Avengers. Mm. Thor, hands down. <laughs> no question. Why? Thor, look at him. Huh? Look at him. What? Chris Helmsworth? Yeah, but pussy. You think Chris Helmsworth don't have a pussy? You think he got a pussy? He's way too pretty to have a dick. <laughs> Chris Helmsworth? Yo. Bro, come on, man. He has the oh. She said he has the hammer. Well, yeah, he sits on it. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, help help, help uh, the white girl in. <laughs> help Black Widow in. Listen, <laughs> so you didn't see Eddie on SNL? I, I only saw one sketch. What sketch did you see? Um... Uh, it was the sketch where he was, it was kind of a playoff of an old joke of his. Where, uh, all I, of them, he I did, synced he, it, I synced it. He did all his, he did all the his old characters. The bears are coming, they're eating the elves. And, no, that wasn't an old sketch. Well, it was that an was? old stand-up bit that he never did in any of his specials. But really? I think he did on an album he released or something. And it was about this kid who was like, when the TV cameras come around, he starts saying what happened. He's just exaggerating, making things crazier, crazier. The, the elf, the elf eyewitness uh, which is a play off the Black Eye Witness, which I Black Eye Witnesses are always hilarious. Yeah. But the Black but he he did that years ago. Wow! Look up right now. I'll look it up. Go on. But the Black Elf Eye Witness sketch really shows the level of Eddie Murphy's talent, right? Yeah. Because if anybody else does that sketch, it's probably corny, right? But he made that sketch funny just off the sheer will of being Eddie Murphy. You know how they talk about basketball players like you can't beat them just off their sheer will. That that, that thing Michael Jordan had, that thing Kobe Bryant had, like that thing they say LeBron doesn't have. He may mm. be developing now, but it's just a will to win. Mm. That's what Eddie Murphy has with his talent. Mm. Eddie Murphy has that level of talent where he can just will something that's probably a three or four at best. And turn it into, into a, a turn it into an eight or fucking nine. Yeah. Easily. It's amazing to see him do it. Let's take a break in the podcast. Uh to tell y'all it's 2020, almost 2020. All right. And guess what? All that stuff in your home that you didn't use in 2019, it's still there. It's taking up space. Come on, man. It's a new decade. You need to clean that shit out. All right. Cause that stuff you got is useful to absolutely no one. So don't let another year go by. Just sell it on Macari. All right. Mercury is the spelling app. Mercury is the selling app that makes selling almost anything Mercari, fast and no, easy. Mercari <laughs> is the selling app that makes selling almost anything fast and easy. Here's where you begin. Just go through your home and find all that stuff you didn't use in 2019. The phone in the drawer. Those jeans you only wore once. That handbag hiding in the back of your closet. Clearly, Mercari is only selling to people who got money. All right. Listing takes just minutes. You take a few pics, add a description and boom, your item is connected to millions of buyers on the app. Mercari will even email you a shipping label when it sells. All right. Everything ships. So there are no awkward meetups with strangers. The app has over 500,000 reviews on the app store with an average 4.8 star rating. So why not give it a try? So ring in the new year with less stuff in your home and more money in your pocket with Mercari. That's M-E-R-C-A-R-I. Mercari, the selling app. Guys, if you're looking for a fun way to pass time while engaging your brain and enjoying breathtaking visuals in a gripping story, 
Your answer is Best Fiends. Now, Best Fiends is a casual game anyone can play. You got a long flight, okay? You got some time at work during lunch where you're bored. You don't want to talk to your coworkers. You have to take the subway every morning to work. Man, just go on Mercari, all right? No, don't do that. <laughs> you Morgan and Morgan. Crazy. Yeah. Just go get Best Fiends. Okay, it's a unique and exciting puzzle experience unlike any other puzzle games that are out there. Plus, they update the game monthly with new levels and events so it never gets old. It also does not require internet to play. You hear that? You don't need that Wi-Fi. You just play it. It's already on your phone. You engage your brain with fun puzzles, collect tons of cute characters. Trust me, with over 100 million downloads, this five-star rated mobile puzzle game is a must-play. Download Best Fiends free on the Apple App Store or Google Play. That's friends without the R. Best Fiends. Go get it. Back to the show. I think Eddie did the best you could do on SNL. What is? What do you mean by that? SNL is really not a place where you can go out there and like really show your show your range of skills. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. like SNL is not the proper showcase for your comedic talent. If you, I don't know, it's like it's like it's weird because SNL should be the pros, right? But it's almost like you're in college playing in a system that restricts you, kind of. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Yes. And uh, what I, th I thought he did, I thought he did good. You know, I I um I have no, I have one. Two critiques, right? I thought Buckwheat should have been mumble rappers, right? Because they had Buckwheat uh, on the Mass Singer, and he did like Beyonce single ladies, yeah, yeah, which I is like that, a ten year old yeah. song. I think Buckwheat doing mumble rappers would have been hilarious. So okay. Buckwheat doing Bad and Bougie would have been phenomenal to me, right? I also think that when it comes to comedic acting, Eddie, we see with Dolomite. I have high hopes for coming to America too now. Him on SNL, incredible. I'm just not sure about the stand-up aspect of it. Ooh. I'm not sure about the stand-up aspect. To me. I just think stand-up is, is, is very difficult. You know what I'm saying? And, and, you know, like, to, to, to get back in that stand-up ring right now, that might be a little tough for Eddie. You know what I'm saying? I think Eddie's, like, uh, he's just so cool. Like, his demeanor is just so cool. Like, I just don't. I don't know. I'm just basing this off what I saw on SNL, the little monologue that he did. It I thought was, he didn't do a monologue. He did a monologue. He did a monologue. He did like four or five minutes, and then Chappelle came out, and Tracy Morgan came out, and Chris Rock came out, and Keenan came out. But he did a little monologue. He had a nice little jab at Bill Cosby. What'd he say? He just said, you know, he just talked about the fact that he's here with all 10 of his kids tonight, and, you know, Bill Cosby is in jail. 30 years ago, if you'd have bet me that uh, I'd be here with 10 kids and Bill Cosby would be in jail. I would have took that bet on, 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 you know, <laughs> on you being right. Yeah, yeah, but he yeah. was like, guess, guess who's America's dad now? Yeah, you know? Yeah. And <clears throat> that was a nice little jab, but I don't know. I don't know if I'm, I don't know if, I don't know if Eddie can still bring it in the stand up space. That is the only thing that is, is still to be questioned, but we have no reason to question Eddie Murphy because he's Eddie fucking Murphy. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like we have no reason to doubt that he can go out there and do it. I just know that that stand up shit. Yeah. It's tough, bro. It's tough, but it's also like you're, you're dealing with the platform. Mm -hmm. You know, like SNL might be the worst platform for stand up. Yeah. You know, it's it, especially for what Eddie does. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, Eddie, once you're, Eddie is animated, right? Once you're in the joke, he creates the scene. He sets the stages for the scene, creates the scene, and then he heightens, 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 heightens. And I think that maybe his greatest skill outside, obviously, doing these incredibly good impressions is his ability to heighten the joke. Right? Yeah. Most people will leave the joke at the first punchline. He keeps heightening it. Remember back in the, the Goonie Goobal you know, yeah, with Delirious, yeah, 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 yeah. she fell down the stairs. You know, you, all these, th everything yeah. keeps getting, her. your wife's a Goonie Google. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, she's yeah. a Bigfoot, Gus. It just keeps hiding, hiding, hiding. And um, SNL, a monologue, is often not written by the person itself, right? Yeah. You have a team of writers, and those writers don't know how to write like Eddie Murphy. They don't know how to create a script like Eddie Murphy, right? They're doing classic setup punchline, yeah. one-liner bits that are meant to get an applause break out of cleverness, but not really out of like funny. Yeah. You know? So if you unleash Eddie in his style, remember Eddie's jokes? Eddie didn't have one joke that was one minute long. It might be six minutes, each of his jokes, these pieces, these stories. So I think when we see Eddie do stand-up, and don't get me wrong, it's going to take him months to get it right. It's going to take a year probably for him to get it to the point where he needs to be. Maybe two. 
But when we see him do it, we'll see Eddie being Eddie, not a contrived monologue. If I if I got my executive producer hat on, <clears throat> if I'm on Eddie Murphy's team, I'm not even setting Eddie up for failure like that doing a stand up. What I'm doing with Eddie Murphy is I'm doing a one man show. I'm doing what Mike Tyson did when he was on Broadway. Mm -hmm. I'm going to put Eddie Murphy up there and I'm going to have Eddie Murphy go up there and I'm not even going to have him I'm not even going to have him doing stand up. I'm going to take away all expectation and have him sitting down. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Sitting down in a throne and he's telling his story of his life. Mm. From Child, not even you don't got to do childhood. You can start with childhood because a lot of things that happen in your childhood, sure. you know, or impact what happened in your adult life. Absolutely. But just telling stories about being Eddie Murphy, the eighties, nineties yeah. icon. It's like Forrest Gump. A absolutely. Like yeah. I wouldn't even set him up. I wouldn't even set him up for stand up. Put I him on that. Put him on that stand up throne. You have pictures idea. behind him. So you know when he's telling his stories and he's doing these because he's he's really the OG uncle at the holiday. Dinner, dude. I think it's a telling you these stories when everybody's just gathered around, like, oh shit, it's a great idea, Uncle Eddie ripping. Great idea. Like I, I saw him on Fallon. I think it was. I wanted him to late, late night show. I think it was Fallon. I don't remember which one it was, yeah. but he was telling this story about Marlon Brando. Yeah, how he went to dinner with Marlon Brando and how Marlon Brando was talking to him about Beverly Hills Cop of Forty Eight Hours or something like that, and he was like. Marlon was quoting scenes from him, and mm. he goes into this whole thing where he's talking like Marlon Brando, like, let's do that. Because Mike Tyson's one-man play on Broadway. Yeah, it was great. That Spike Lee did? Incredible. Yeah. yeah. And Mike ain't no comedian, but Mike went out there and he told stories about his life that were funny. Yeah. That were honest. Yeah. That 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 were emotional. Yeah. So he pulled at all your your, your heartstrings. Yeah. Let Eddie go out there and do the same thing. Neil, I think it'll Neil be Brennan, incredible. Neil Brennan, he, I still say, and, and, and over the past decade, and I'm really, really thinking about this, I still think Neil Brennan has the most genius stand-up special. It won with the three mics. The three mics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because he touched everything. It was it was one mic for regular stand-up, another mic that was for I just... I love Neil. Yeah. I disagree, but I love Neil. Okay. Yeah, yeah. An another mic that was just for straight-up Twitter yeah. punchlines, yeah. right? And then the other was just straight-up emotional shit you would be telling your therapist. It was it was a great, unique way to, to like, do stand-up, but it, it wasn't... I don't think Neil would be like, oh, that was better than what Chappelle put out. No, no, I'm not. I don't mean content wise. Oh, I mean okay, okay, okay. The execution, the mechanics of it, right? The, ex the he did like, a spin on something that was yes, stand up. Yes, 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 yes. yes, yes. And, the, and it was successful, and people talked about it yes, because of that. People yes. need something to be shaken up. They yes. need something different. Yes, I agree with you in, in that regard for sure. Um, the the thing with the thing with doing a one man show, which I think you know lends to what you're saying here, is that the expectations are way lower when you do stand up. The expectation is to laugh. So when you're not laughing the show is failing. Yeah. When you're doing a one-man show, the expectation is not laughter. So when you laugh, it's like, oh, I got to laugh out of this? I just want stories, bro. But here's the thing. And I'm not saying that he's not down to do this. There is an ego, I'm sure, in a stand-up. When you've done stand-up, which is the hardest, in my opinion, of the performing arts, because there's only one reaction that's tolerable. Laughter. Laughter. There's only one, right? When you've done stand-up, then I think doing the one-man show... I'm not, I know there's a lot of guys that do it and they should do it and their styles lend themselves to it. But on some level, they recognize and understand it's an easier thing to do. So maybe Eddie is going, well, I can do stand up. I know. You know what I mean? Like, I can do stand up. Nobody that can do stand up does the one man show first. It's often the people that can't do stand up will go, well, I have a one man show. I, I, when you're, when you're Eddie Murphy and you got the history that he has. Yeah. The things that we probably don't know about, the stories we don't know about. I would love it. Go pull, pull up the be throne. More interesting. That's it. Pull up that throne. Sit in that throne like the king you are, and just tell us stories, Uncle Eddie. Hundred percent. I I would I would much rather that in the stand up. We know it's going to be funny. Mm -hmm. We know that we're going to learn from it. We know that it's going going to pull at our emotional heartstrings. I would much rather that than put Eddie Murphy out there and say, "Okay, be funny." By the way, that's the worst expectation in the world. That's why I admire stand up so much, and I would never disrespect that craft because, like you said, there's only one reaction. You got to go out there and make people laugh. If you are, if, if things are coming out of your mouth. Mm. And nobody's laughing. Mm. You are failing. You're failing. <laughs> and you've never felt those beads of sweat grow down the back of your neck mm -hmm. like that mm -hmm. until you've been on that stage saying some shit and nobody's chuckling. All right? <laughs> that is why my favorite thing, which uh, is another thing that I want to do, I think that we have to put out a special 
of people bombing. I think, no, I'm serious. I think we have to Andrew have. Andrew Dice Clay did that. Really? Yeah. Right after his biggest special, he put out The Day the Laughter Died, and it was just a special of him bombing. Really? Yeah. yeah. Chris, oh. you watched that, right? Which one? The Day the Laughter Died? Not as it. Andrew Dice Clay? Or is it an album or something like that, but he's just bombing the whole time. It was right after he was, when he was the biggest comic in the world. Bro, I would love to do a compilation of the world's greatest bombs. Oh, yeah. That would be oh, so yeah. good. Because there's not, by the way, there's nothing funnier than failure. It is it's the truth. <laughs> Watching other people fail yeah. is hilarious. Why you think we watch the? Why you like to watch videos of people falling off shit? Oh yeah, and people running the jump and missing the dunks. Like that shit is funny. Yo, a compilation of people bombing mm -hmm. would be absolutely incredible. Yeah. So we need to. Th we, I, I I wouldn't mind putting that together. But we just got to have comedians that are willing to let us share those intimate moments. Right, and that have them captured. What's wrong with that? And that kind of stuff. Because yeah. it's it's a learning experience, right? The problem is. The whole reason you do a special is to advertise yourself so more people come out to your shows. <laughs> but the, but the, you, listen, every comedian is bombed. Right, but nobody's going to come it, out to someone's show in the future because like, man, the way he bombed in his special. It depends. It, it, it goes back to like when you're a, when you're a human, right? When, when you're a human being, it's easier to talk about your failures when you have succeeded. So if these comedians have gone on to have massive success... They wouldn't mind showing the times that they feel. Yeah, this is not a come up story. This is the people. This is like you get Louie, you get Dave, you get all these people to share videos of their worst sets that they've probably recorded. And then if they do it, you get to see them at their most vulnerable yeah. doing bits that you know work. Yeah. You know, like, yeah, I think there's something there. Yeah. I always wanted to do that. I was thinking about doing this is something different, but like, you know, when I put out the special, um, by the way, we're adding another show to the special because the LA show is sold out. So make sure you guys go get tickets for that. I've probably already announced it, but uh, theandrewschultz.com presale code is Matador. We're recording this Monday, so I hope everything's confirmed. I haven't fully confirmed it, but I'm hoping when you're listening to this shit, everything is confirmed. Presale code Matador. Go get those. Um, but what were we saying? Oh yeah, what I want to do is like, what when I release material, right? Mm-hmm. Material, not when I'm, you know, messing with the crowd, that kind of stuff, but the actual like material that I've been touring. The you're seeing like the finished product of a joke, right? It's about a really fucked up topic and usually takes a really fucked up spin on that topic. But when you see it finally released in a special, these types of things, you see the finished product, you see when I worked it out to get people to laugh at this horrible thing. You don't see what it takes to get there. But that's what you do with inside jokes, kind of, though, right? Inside jokes, okay. I'm we're taught, we talk about it. But I think there's a world where after I release the special, we, we release the bits in their infancy when I was just working them out and how much they bomb and people fucking screaming shit and want to throw shit at mm -hmm. me, fighting, getting kicked out the club so that people really understand the process of getting to this joke. Now it's really funny and everybody's having a great time. Earlier, you want to cancel me, you want to fucking write the Yelp reviews, you want to call the club and say how awful it is. Mm -hmm. And it's just understanding the process of this is what it takes to get to here at the joke. So when you're canceling I, I a comedian, genius. you know what I'm saying? When you cancel a comic for a joke, you don't know what part of the process he's in on. If he says, yeah, that's the finished product of the joke and it sucks and it sucks, but I'm sure he's still working on it. He's still getting better on it. The reason I think that's genius is because I feel like that's something that's um just being lost in our in our society period, like the process because mm. of social media because we're so used to seeing these finished products, right? Right. But, you know, one thing that I would encourage everybody to work on, especially going into a new decade, is like, understand that there is still a process to shit, mm. right? And I think that that's being, that's been lost. Like, yeah. you see, I don't even think, people, people don't even show you the beginning no more. They don't. They just show you the end, yeah. which is some bullshit. Yeah. Like, there is always a process to everything. Show me how to do this, son. Yeah. Because when you show me how to do it, then possibly I can do it too. And even if I don't do exactly what you're doing, mm. I understand that there's a process Two things, mm. and I understand when I when I'm when I'm in those moments where I'm going through that process, I don't feel down on myself. Y'all talk to so many kids nowadays who deal with anxiety, who deal with depression. A lot of times, they're just getting down on themselves mm. because they're going through the process, and they think that this shit is foreign. Like they mm. they don't because they don't see nobody else going through it. So they're like, "Why me? Mm. Why is this struggle happening to me, nigga? This struggle happened to everybody, mm. right? You're just going through that process, and I think that we should start showing people that process again." Yeah, take you to the beginnings.
Yes, I want to do. I want to do Ask an Idiot because. But let's get some Ask an Idiot. Let's in. get some Ask an Idiot because this we is the, the end of the year. Internet. To make it happen, um, you better have some good shit, Taylor. This is the we wanted to do Ask an Idiot, and these are the things that we um. Anything you wanted to ask us all year long. Okay. You have ready? the opportunity to ask us now. Okay. We should have Taylor read them. Okay, Taylor. You Only because somebody. it'll give her something to do. I was reading on the YouTube comments one day and somebody said, yo, Taylor got a bubble. <laughs> so <laughs> she needs to take all those big ass dicks, bro. Listen, she and they was like, and they was like, it's they like was a like, and a they was like, yo, and, and they put the timestamp on when you could see it, right? <laughs> so I said, let me go see what the fuck. So I go look at the timestamp. It's literally, it's like a half a second of her walking by. So that means somebody really had to pause that shit. Yup. Yup. That's how I was with the baby's dick. Oh, God. <laughs> that shit was there for half a second. Pause. Zoom in. You zoomed in too? No. <laughs> I didn't need to. So fucking big box. All right. Um, I actually had the better ones on here. So, Come on, Taylor. This is the last okay, Ask an Idiot so of a Year. Make sure these shit good. All right. From Fly Kid underscore name. Ooh, ooh, real quick. Before we do this, I want to talk about one thing. Okay. okay. I saw an absolutely, well, we saw an absolutely amazing boxing match this weekend. Oh, man. It was a fighter named Tony Harrison. Yeah, from who Detroit. Was the champ, who was fighting Jermel Charlo. Rematch. Rematch. Which which from a year ago, which showed you how fast the year goes by. Because I swear I saw that fight in January. Last month. <laughs> it felt like last month. <laughs> so this and I literally were watching on Alex's phone while we're in Philadelphia. Um, I go on stage. The show's in Philadelphia. I get off stage. And it turns out Tony Harrison was knocked out by Jermel Charlo. Before at, go no, at, before that we before were we were in the group chat. We were in the group chat talking about how good a fighter Tony Harrison. Is. Let me tell you something. <laughs> I reached out to him. I DM'd him on Instagram. I reached out to because I, I really want to help him market himself. This guy is so good at boxing, and I'm talking about someone who was knocked out. He is so good at boxing. He is one of the most pure intellectual ring IQ boxers I've ever seen in my entire Just life. a good, Son, solid boxer. Solid boxer, but amazing defense, amazing timing, amazing offense, like so strat strategic. Everything was a chess move. Everything setting up something else. He decided to go right at him, play bully was ball with him the down. bully, walked him down. The last fight, he was like dancing around, keeping him on the outside, killing but, him with that jab. He was doing a little fight, bit. He was doing he all went, of that shit this fight. He took it to him, yeah. and he was, in my mind, beating I told you they were going to rip him off, because on two of the scorecards you saw, yeah, Charlo was Charlo, up. but he was yeah. easily beating Charlo. He got caught with a big shot. He that ends left up hook, getting, baby. That left hook, and then like four left uppercuts. He ends up doing, and the left hook, they The left hook is what drops him in the second round, too. That's right. Yeah. But the left hook they exchanged, and Charlo's a little bit shorter, and it was amazing. Like Tony had his hand up blocking, but the but Charlo's caught him right just, on the jaw. It was right on the jaw. But still, some people say the stoppage was even a little bit early because he was kind of defending himself when he got back up. Nah, they should they should have stopped the fight after this after the the third knockdown. Them four uppercuts in a row. Yeah, they should have stopped that fight, bro. All right, fair enough. You could have killed people, that dude. His neck snapped back. I'm like, oh shit. That's possible. You are right. Now here's the thing. I fucking love this guy as a fighter. He's the type of guy, and I think Van said it's like if he had power, he would be the biggest guy that. in the world. It was you. Yeah, said yeah, yeah. If he had power, he'd be the biggest guy yeah. in the world because he is an amazing boxer. No power, but though. Not, the power's not there, but his shit talk is also amazing. I think that's what caused him to lose, though. You know what? Maybe it did. Maybe it was just he just got caught with a lucky shot. That being said, he got too comfortable. Like you still in there with Charlo, who's a former champion. When yeah. he was doing all the showboat and this shit and doing his little shimmies and he acting got too like comfy. he acting like Charlo couldn't hurt him. He got like, too comfy. Okay. And he got caught. But here's the thing: his name, his Instagram is Made in Detroit 1990. He is a He's like a the rawest, purest Detroit guy when you see him. As far as boxing goes, Detroit has a great history. Obviously, I think Tommy Hearns from Detroit. I believe so. Right? And the you know the great- uh, Emmanuel Stewart. Yeah, Gronk, yeah. Gronk Jim, uh, Emmanuel Stewart, and that's where he trained out of. This guy is the real fucking deal. I think there's big things for him. I just hope that he can get the marketing angle down because he has all the town. He has all the shit to talk. And then when he's in the room, he's in the ring, he backs it the fuck up. He did get TKO, but I think it's one of these things where it's like, all right, dude, you're dealing with a beast in Charlo. Cause yeah. credit to Charlo, you're dealing with the beast. 
Don't ever forget he's a beast. Charlo showed that there's levels to this shit. There is. And by the way, when you get your belts back, that's how you get your belts back. You no disrespect to Anthony it. Joshua, but getting your belt back by a decision after you got your ass Running whacked from a fat guy, the on. way Ruiz waxed you the first fight, yeah. eh, Charlo, that's and, how you do and it. Charlo lost the decision. But he came back to show you this motherfucker shouldn't have never been in the ring with me to begin with. Yo, credit to Charlo. <laughs> credit Yo, to Charlo. Yes. I would love to see a third fight. I don't nah. think Charlo's people will ever give it to him. You mm. wouldn't love to see a third fight? Nah. That's a lie. You're nah. lying nah. yourself. Nah. You're lying. Right before, You're lying. Listen, it was a great fight. Why would you not want to the, see another the, one? The round, remember, look at the last text I said. I said, I said, Yo, granted a knockdown or a knockout, don't, don't be surprised if this goes a draw, because I never thought they would give the fight to Charlo. Yeah. Don't be surprised if this is a draw and they're the third fight. And then I put... Never mind. Never mind. I saw <laughs> Cause, that text. Because that left when you was like, what happened? Yeah. I'm like, he just went down. And I'm like, oh, matter of fact, he just went down twice. The ending of that fight, nah, there's no need for a rematch. Yeah. No need for a rematch. I think, I think there's no need for it, but I think what will have to happen is Harrison will have to, you know, get another belt or become number yeah. one contender and then force that rematch. Yeah, Harrison got yeah. offer it to you because you're too dangerous. Absolutely. But Har Harrison's the type of fighter where if he don't have a fan base, nobody's going to want to fight him because you cannot look good in front of Harrison. Right? Like, Harrison is the type of guy who's going to make you look bad. He'll probably beat you. He might not knock you out, so it's going to go to the scorecards. So you're not going to see any of the top guys go, shit, I want to fight that guy. You would never want to fight. It's like Winky Wright. Remember Winky Wright? Nobody wanted Winky. to fight Winky yeah, Wright. Yeah, I remember Winky. He didn't have power, but he was an amazing defensive boxer. Yeah. Get in there, touch you up, and he could win decisions. That's what Harrison's going to have to do. He's going to have to win this shit on personality. He's going to have to take something out of the Mayweather playbook. You're going to have to start doing antics. You're going to have to make wrestling out of this shit. Get big. I like Harrison. Um, I thought Harrison looked great until he didn't. <laughs> I'm being That's the thing. With you. That's I thought thing. he looked great Same thing with Jared until Hurd. he didn't. That's what happened with him. He lost to Jared at Hayhan. He lost to Jared Hurd. Same way. I believe. Harrison? Yeah, and it was like he was boxing him up and all of a sudden he got caught. I thought he looked great until he didn't, man. That left hook was nasty. Strong guy. And them four, them four left uppercuts in the row was like, God damn, yeah. bro. Like he and it was just it, it honestly, I think it was just a little lapse in judgment. Yeah. And a lack of focus. That's it. Like that's showboating, bro. You're still in there with Charlo. Yep. Like you actually still have more to. He had more to prove in this second fight than Charlo did trying to get his belt back. Hundred percent. And he just he 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 failed that test in dramatic fashion. So come on back, Tony. We support you. Uh, all right, Taylor. Let's do it. You're some asking idiots, young Taylor. Well, I don't know if I can still call you young. How old are you? <laughs> <laughs> Younger than you. 20, what, 20, 28. That's obvious, though. That's not a dick. Okay, so that's all that matters. Those big ass so. dicks will age you, yo. <laughs> <laughs> yo. Ducking bad vibes with all you ducking big dick. <laughs> <laughs> Can't duck them. <laughs> oh, my God. Shit is like a turnstile. <laughs> <sighs> All right, so jump from... over him, then. <laughs> <laughs> <Like> pop scotch. <laughs> what, what is that shit? What is that shit with the ropes? Double, double dutch. Double dutch. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, double yeah. dicks. Yo, double, double dicks. dicks would be wild. All right. That means that's when you get the train ran on you by two people with um baby sized dicks. Jesus. All right, go ahead. <laughs> All right, fly kid underscore named underscore cam. He wants to know what's your biggest troll moment of 2019. Biggest troll moment? Mm -hmm. I, I haven't done no trolling this year. Not that I... Re I haven't done no trolling this year. Mm. <laughs> just, 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 I mean, just because you think it was a troll moment don't mean that it was trolling. Like when you get excited when you do your little shoulders? I can't think of an exact one, but I've seen you do shoulders a lot this I haven't, year. I haven't had no troll moments this year. I've had moments where I've purposely done things to piss people off. <laughs> Being a troll. No, that's not, that's not trolling. Um, Hearing something that somebody said about me and them not knowing that I know they said it okay. and constantly repeating it around them. And then what they said. You know what I mean? Like somebody said something like, oh, Charlamagne thinks things are all about him. So I constantly, <laughs> yeah, it's all about me. You know it's all about me, baby. That's right. It's all about me. You know? Who'd you do that to? Eh, don't worry. No, it doesn't matter. So, Who'd you do that to? Yeah, it doesn't matter. All right, guys, let's take a break for a second because uh, we got to talk about the brilliant idiot law firm Morgan and Morgan. I mean, I'll be honest with you. These guys are more brilliant than they are idiotic. It's a personal injury law firm that fights for the people, not the powerful. If you've been injured in a car crash or other incident, Morgan and Morgan will take on the insurance company so you can focus on getting better. On average, people who hire an attorney after a crash recover three times more than those who don't. Simple as that. These companies will try to pay you the least amount of money they possibly can. And if you get someone fighting for you, you can actually get what you deserve. 
With 500 attorneys and offices in Florida, New York, and across America, Morgan & Morgan will fight to get you the compensation you deserve. If you've been injured in a car crash, slip, fall, or on the job, they may be able to help you. Morgan & Morgan has helped thousands of people recover billions, billions, not millions, billions of dollars. Best of all, hiring them is 100% free unless you win. That means the only way you pay them is if they get you the money. I mean, if that's not incentive, I don't know what is. So for a free consultation, that's more free, visit forthepeople.com. That's F-O-R, thepeople.com forward slash idiots. Okay. Or dial pound law on your cell phone. That's pound 529. That's forthepeople.com forward slash idiot for a free, no obligation consultation. There's only one, Morgan and Morgan. Uh, let's get back to the show. As who has been the biggest troll then? What, like, this year? Yeah, this year. I don't know. I'll be honest, I don't know. I'm not sure, but I don't love this question. Move on. Okay. Um, let's see. I, I know for a fact that it's people had questions for us all 2019. I mean, I need some good shit, wanna, Taylor. Really, give me the questions. Give me the questions, Taylor. Taylor. You know, it's just fucked right. up. We tried. We tried. <laughs> we tried. We tried we to tried give to you an opportunity. You, try to get you to earn your fucking money. Jesus Christ, Taylor. <laughs> Look at the questions she picks. What do you guys? What do you guys think about? These are just no, no. Now this is a good question. People can learn from. Can I show you a horrible one? <laughs> Tell me. What do you guys think about cats? Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Next level pain. This is funny though. Next level painter says, "Man, I think Charlemagne lying about how big yeah, his man. dick is. Motherfucker's only five two. Says he's eight inches. That's like a whole third of your body. Just stop lying, Uncle Charla. <laughs> like that's what we ask you. That's what you got. That's what you're thinking about, my G. Okay. Yo, this that's is- how you can become six feet. Just put your dick on the top of your head. <laughs> 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 uh, this is a good one. At ish underscore Mel says, "How do you shit in a public bathroom?" Hashtag Hemi. He meant to put Hezzy. Nobody uh, shits in public no, places better than Andrew. I had a hemorrhoid. Oh. So, um, how I shit is I always go cheek to bowl. The fuck I'll is that? Cheek to bowl. I put my cheeks directly on the bowl. I don't believe in putting paper down on the toilet seat. Okay. I wash the toilet seat first with some toilet paper. Okay? If the toilet seat is really peed on, I'll put some water on the paper, wash it down, then do another wash with more toilet paper to dry it. Then I go cheek to pull, but I always go cheek to pull. Mm. I love cheek to pull. Mm. I need to go cheek to pull. You like the feeling that porcelain on them cheeks? I like the porcelain on the cheeks. I like the connection I get. I like warming up the seat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You You're know? not afraid of like catching anything? No, I haven't caught anything so far. What do you catch in your butt besides, you know, AIDS? Huh? I don't think I mean, AIDS you don't is not think a AIDS is real? No, I don't think <laughs> Taylor did say, you did say that, Taylor. Horrible segue. I don't think AIDS is real. No, Boy, Magic it. Johnson got y'all really thinking that shit, huh? <laughs> Lord have mercy. <laughs> no, the toilet, the dirty toilets, I don't think that's real. What do you mean? Because they try to say you could get disease on, from toilet, uh, dirty toilet seats. I don't think that's All right, real. Go look on, one. You wash your chicken, but not your toilet seats? <laughs> I go, do go, go lick the toilet in the iHeart bathroom right now then, if, if okay. it's so sanitary next question I like this one Hail Gif says is there a certain goal that brilliant idiots flagrant two are trying to reach besides just giving out free gems and expressing your own opinions is there a certain goal yes um, yeah sure but I mean that's that is the main goal it's, it's just about enjoying uh, conversation and Talking about the things that they say that we can't talk about. I mean, that's really what Flagrant 2 is all about, is just having those conversations and making those jokes. The purpose of Flagrant 2 is a space to make the jokes that we would make when we're with our friends, but do it publicly. And just create some normalcy in this time where you can get canceled for everything. So we're basically like, no, fuck it. We're going to lean into it. Yeah, I don't think that there's a goal. Um, for me, it's just like, yeah, creating a safe space for unsafe conversation, unsafe yeah. people. You know, um, yeah. I think that's when, that's, that's when shit gets fucked up, when... You are sitting around having a conversation like it's just you and your folks and the people that you invite over and then all these other motherfuckers who ain't even who don't even got a fucking invitation, mm -hmm. you know what I mean, are uh, uh, peep in and and come into the middle of a conversation. Mm -hmm. Like, what the, what the fuck they're talking about in there? Get, shut that shit down. Yeah. You so, don't have to press play. You don't, you don't have to fucking don't press, press play. play. Nobody invited you. Yeah, it's I just think, By the way, I think that shit is dead. What's that? <clears throat> I think that whole cancel culture shit is dead. Yeah, I hope I so. I really do. No, I really do, yo. I really think that we've gotten to a place where people realize how corny that shit is. Yeah. For you just to be trying to shut motherfuckers up for for A, what they say, or B, what they've said. Yeah. Do you worry about that? With your, no. with your upcoming special coming? 
No. Do you worry about them digging up old shit? Yeah, I mean, probably. You know, I'm sure they'll do it. But it is what it is. Who gives a fuck? I don't care because yeah, yeah. what I've realized about these pussies is that they only do it. They don't care about me. What they care about is getting these big corporations to bend to their whim. Yeah, it's people that have no power anywhere else. Trying to. And this is the first time they can feel like they got a big dick. Exactly. They're finally being hurt. They can't flex power on me. Like, the reason they don't come for me now is because who they going to cancel me from? Myself. Mm, I put out all my own shit. So when when I do it for the network, I'm sure someone's going to try to do something, whatever. And that's just up to the network to man up. But if the network don't, real talk. Let's think about it. Let's say you cancel my special and it don't come out, right? Thank you. You just made my special the most coveted special. Absolutely. In the modern and, times. And, and now you can Louis so C.K. crazy. Yeah, now you can Louis C.K. and sell it for $2. Or wherever the fuck it is. You know what I mean? Whenever we go, all I'm saying is, you just gave me the marketing platform. Oh, you canceled my special before it came out because it was too crazy? Well, we got to see what this special is all about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, my yeah, way, yeah. I don't worry about it. You know what's wild about that? I, I want to encourage all, uh, all potentially all creatives with potentially dangerous rhetoric, just make sure you got a small little clause in your contract that says if they want to motherfucking cancel you for some shit that you said publicly mm-hmm. already, I don't give a fuck if it's on social media, mm-hmm. I don't give a fuck if it's on a podcast, on a radio, just make sure you got a small clause in your contract they gotta, that they got to pay you anyway mm-hmm. because they should have vetted you a little bit better. That's it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's Simple it. as that. Okay, Gazol's papi is clearly uh, one of Wax's girlfriends. She says, what's the most romantic gift for Wax? A new pair of Tims or a new pair of gloves? <sighs> who is this? Who, I don't who, know. who I think he's got a lot of those. What, 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 who could this possibly be? I'm looking at Gazol's papi. And um, <laughs> it's clearly one of his uh, Latino, Latino women pretending to be a man in this situation. Because you know Wax don't talk to black women. <gasps> we got to have that conversation in 2020. Whoa. Uh-uh. We got to have that conversation in 2020. She's not black? No, 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 no. What is she? Dominicano. That's I not think. Afro-Cuban? Or Latino. Or Afro-Latino? You know I can't tell them apart. What are they? <laughs> Latino. She but, likes Jennifer Lopez. That's what I know. But Afro-Latino, I thought they get to be black. Okay, she is that, dude. So then she's black. Yes. Yes, she's Afro-Latino. Okay. So he likes black women. So I would tell you, Miss Afro-Latino, probably a new pair of Tim's. Probably get them both. A new pair of Tim's and a new pair of gloves. That's not expensive either. Yeah, don't That's be it. cheap. Give them the combo pack. Take one glove, put it in one Tim. Put the other glove, put it in the other Tim. Give them a little combo pack. Okay? Can I tell you one? Yeah. Yes. Um, Jonte, J-O-N-T-E, underscore Berggren. Um, he wants to know, what's your crazy experience together? Like y'all two. What's our crazy experience yeah, together? Yeah, what's, what's a story that no one knows about you guys? That like nobody knows. Remember that one time where we were videotaping the baby's dick together? Do you remember that? <laughs> I don't recall that one. And then we released it for viral content. You don't remember that? <laughs> That's crazy. That angle you had, though, you was on his shoulders. I know, bro. dude. I did. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah. No, you were standing on his security Kong shoulders. Yeah. And you had the camera down. Yeah. Yeah, was that was like, wild. Who's the baby now? <laughs> <laughs> There's a better one. <laughs> <laughs> this just reminded me why we don't do asking these. Y'all yeah, shit. Look, 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 look. I have one. I have them ready okay. for yeah. you, Charmaine. Mm-hmm. Mogul underscore mind underscore motives wants to know: Do you think the conversation of mental health can have a negative effect? No. How can a conversation about <laughs> something positive and encouraging people to go get help for something ever have a negative effect? Like how I was encouraging brothers to go get therapy, to practice mindfulness, to, you know, get into exercises like meditation, you know, how could that ever possibly have a negative effect? How? Um, Don't answer the question for him. You just asked the question. <laughs> like, Taylor, why you, how could that have a negative because effect? Because this is what I was thinking about with mental health, though, because what if, like, when you go to therapy, mm-hmm. doesn't it not give you sometimes negative effect? Like, it's That's like the part of it, though. But that... That's part of healing. You got to go through that. You're going to go through that. You're going to have those breakthroughs where you're crying and you're thinking about, you know, wild shit that happened to you. Like, you have to go through that. You cannot heal what you don't reveal. Didn't Jay-Z tell y'all? Yeah, but so you think that it's just to basically when you go to come the gym, to Do you know what the process of going to the gym past? is, Taylor? Huh? Do you know what the process of working out is and lifting weights? Do you know what happens? Yeah. <laughs> what happens is you tear the muscle. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. when you tear the muscle, you give the muscle the opportunity to rebuild itself. Yeah. And when it rebuilds itself... It rebuilds itself much stronger mm-hmm. so that it doesn't tear 
from that type of impact it's in a, the future. It's a process. It's like when you're in the hair salon and they're taking that weave out. You know what I'm saying? Like when you're taking braids out, how fucked up does your hair look in between Boom. <laughs> putting that new shit in? 100%. Like I'm serious. Like that's all it is. Would you want? Would you want to stop at that process of? No, just... but I just think that sometimes maybe some people take it as a negative, as in like they don't want to revisit it. Is your new so... growth negative? No. You're is the so new growth annoying. under your hair negative? <laughs> huh? No. Okay, so you take that old shit out, and then you get it done, and you put the new shit in. I'm giving you a hint here, Taylor. All right. Yeah, Have you seen yourself up, lately? Because first of all, <laughs> you just got okay. it done. Do all not. right. This is the last question. <laughs> then we got to wrap this up. Yes. What is the most valuable lesson you guys learned this year? This is from Walking Canvas One. The most valuable lesson you guys learned this year? Uh, invest in yourself. It has the highest return. Mm. 100%. Simple as that. Invest in yourself. It has the highest return. Uh, the most valuable lesson I learned this year is what I told y'all at the beginning of the podcast. I am worthy. Mm. Every 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 position that I've put myself in, uh, everything I've attained, you know, even even the family and friends that you have around you, because that's that's all energy, right? Like mm. you have to be putting out a certain energy to to, to to get that kind of energy back. Like you build your mm -hmm. your team based on what kind of person you are. So when I look at all the great people around me. Um, I look at my, my beautiful wife, my beautiful daughters. I have earned that. Mm. So the most value, and I am worthy of that. Mm. So that is the most valuable lesson that I have learned this year. I am worthy. So I encourage you all to get to worthy. And if you don't, and, 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 and in the process, because if you don't think you're worthy right now, just know that God thinks you're worthy. Mm. And that is enough to uh, keep you motivated and get you through until you actually feel you're worthy. All right. God so, bless. I want to tell y'all happy holidays, Merry Christmas, happy Hanukkah, happy mm. Kwanzaa. Um, I don't know what you atheists, what do you, athe what do atheists do? Nothing. Nothing, right? Christmas probably. All right. <laughs> Um, everybody does Christmas. Everybody does Christmas. That's you want the them genius, fucking gifts, bro. No, nah, that's the genius branding of not having Jesus in it, is the holiday becomes ubiquitous. But if, it's not if it's Christmas. Yeah, but if you don't have Jesus all over it, yeah. then other people can go, ah, it's Christmas. Let's celebrate Christmas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's yeah, get yeah. a Christmas tree. There's yeah. no fucking pine trees in Jerusalem. Yeah, so you say Xmas. You say Xmas. Xmas. Why do they do that? I have no Why idea. Why is Christ an X? I have no idea. <laughs> listen, as always, if you listen to this podcast, you listen to this podcast, you think we're smart. You think we're intelligent. You think we're brilliant. You're absolutely right. If you listen to this podcast, you think we're just a couple of idiots who don't know shit, you're right too. It's the Brilliant Idiots Podcast. Thank you for listening. God bless. Yeah.